be blocked. Whether or not the police are going to let vehicles go through, we don't know. But this is the kind of stuff that ultimately leads to some sort of an action. Okay. And uh, in that situation, what, what you have is uh, the police making decisions, but those decisions will not be made lightly because of the nature of what could happen. And because you're... Back to you. Uh, so it, does it appear that OPD is in charge or would it be CHP? I guess I don't know if you're on city streets or on the freeway yet. No, they, they, these all appear to me to be OPD cars at this point in time. And I think that that's just, you know, when you spread out uh, your forces, mm -hmm. it just depends on who shows up at your location. It could be CHP. It could even be mutual aid from others if yeah. they needed that kind of thing. But right at the moment, it appears that what they have here, which is uh, in effect two to four police cars, is more than enough to keep the situation uh, in insane. And, I, and again, I think some of these police cars are just coming through and leaving. But I do see, as I say off to my left, I see three trucks that are waiting. They would like to get on the freeway and are hoping that maybe that will be the situation. But the truth is we just don't know. Uh, but that's the first time there's been any backup of, tra of traffic over there whatsoever. And there's no backup uh, from the direction to my right. Uh, Tom, so based, who knows what's going to happen. Go ahead. Based on what you've seen in the past, have you found that at these protests that have happened at the port, we've seen them go on for several hours throughout the day versus a protest that happens and stops uh, freeway traffic. The CHP comes and tries to clear that much more quickly. Is there sort of a different approach to this protest going on behind oh, you? Yeah, the, and the different approach basically is that this is not blocking the freeway down here. They'll probably tolerate this longer, uh, you know, because it is the port. But the, the situation is that is the freeway right there. And at some point in time, they may decide that this has got to be cleared out. But if they do that, then they're going to have enough forces to do that and do it successfully. But that means, you know, performing arrests and doing all the other things. The only problem here for these folks is they're a little bit vulnerable. They're not chained together or anything like that. They're on bicycles and they're on foot. So that situation is really radically different than somebody who chains themselves together and sits there and then they really feel like they must go in there and stop things. At this point in time, if they made an order to clear out, some of those people might well clear out. If they would decide to defy that order, then they would have to make some other decision. But it's not a decision that would necessarily uh, be uh, one that they would uh, take immediate action on because, once again, you do not want to be provocative uh, in a situation where there could be some sort of a thing. The other thing you have to be careful of is somebody in a vehicle just getting angry. Now here, for example, is a truck. He's going by. He would have live got on the freeway and he waited for a while, but he sees no hope of that, so he's just moving on. There are two other trucks off to our right that are sitting there hoping that the freeway will soon be open. They're not moving, and that's the way this is uh, situated right here. So it's, for all intents and purposes, better than worse. And uh, there doesn't seem to be any provocation going on on either side. And as long as that lasts, this could go on forever and ever. And it may just last for as long as people feel they are making their point. Once they feel they've made their point and shut it down, so to speak, then, of course, they will, uh, they'll, they'll disperse from their own, as some already have. That's T the situation here. Tom, I wanted to ask you, were you able to talk to any of the uh, people who were part of the demonstration? Because there were reports that earlier... Uh, just a couple hours ago, there was a protest in front of the West Oakland BART station. I wonder if this is the same uh, group of people that were part of that protest uh, making their way here. Before. Now, I, I can tell you this. I've only been here for a few minutes, but our photographer, Tony Hodrick, who is a very, very experienced oh, yeah. uh, photographer for many, many, many years, he actually went over and tried to talk to some of these people. They refused to talk to us. They said that uh, uh, they had nothing to say to us, and they were just doing what they were doing. So we will certainly... Uh, try to talk to some of them, but uh, the other thing that we have to also be mindful of is that we're on a moving highway, so we don't want to get ourselves into sure. a situation yeah. where we cause some sort of a problem or we ourselves experience some sort of a problem. But certainly I'll go ask some of those folks if they'd be willing to talk to us, and if so, then we will do it in a safe location. But so far, and the two times that Tony has asked, uh, they have not been willing to uh, talk to us. Understood. Tom, do you know how long of a delay in productivity at the port like okay let's say this is it's taken three hours already this morning does it take nine hours to remedy the backup like you know how long does the delay last how much will the port of oakland operations actually be affected 
Very good question. It depends on how active the port actually is. If the port, if the uh, longshore workers go along with it, then the port essentially shuts down. If, however, they're loading and unloading ships and things like that, then you start getting the backup of hundreds of containers per hour, depending on how many uh, of the, uh, uh, depending on how many of the, you know, container uh, lifts are operating. But that situation is really quite different uh, depending on what's going on at the port. So as long as we don't know what's going on at the border, if we don't have a helicopter up taking a look, uh, you can assume that if the longshore workers have decided to uh, stop working, then the whole thing shuts down because the truckers are completely powerless to do anything about that and, uh, and the trains are not going to be working uh, and all of the other intermodal operations that they have, including such things as, you know, customs. If customs is, in, in, is not going to inspect if there's nothing to inspect, but they inspect each and every one of those containers with x-rays. So as long as those containers are piling up, then that slows the whole thing down. So. Uh, an hour delay could be two, three hours, and if you get three hours, you probably, the day is uh, pretty well taken care of, except for the stuff that's already on the ground. Uh, uh, maybe 20 minutes ago, I heard some sort of honking or cheering or some sort of activity there where you are. What was that? A truck driver cheering on protesters? If you, if you remember that, if you can sort of dissect what happened there. And also, let's speak about the truck drivers sure. themselves. They're sort of, you know, the first ones up in all of this. And, and a minute ago, I, I said time is money for them. It, what's the situation personally for the truck, truck drivers who, you know, can't make that left turn and have to go straight through behind you? Well, I have yet to hear one truck honk its horn in favor of this. They're just uh, doing that. But a number of vehicles have passed by, and every time anybody passes by and starts honking their horn, then, of course, that gets the responding cheer that you would expect that uh, would happen. So it's not like there's a, you know, a big partisan thing going on here. Basically what it is, if somebody drives by and they uh, they hit their horn because they, they believe in the cause or they believe in the cause of protesting, etc., then you're going to get some sort of a response cheer. But most of the trucks are just simply trying to do their job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, uh, at least as it respects to this, they don't want to provoke something that's going to delay them even longer. So I think that they're being pretty much quiet. But as you can see, they're, they're skirting the port and they may be going to the areas where they can get in and out of the port or to at least to a, a road or a highway to get out of here. But uh, that is a very, very slow thing because usually I've been down here when there are you know, 30 trucks lined up trying to get through the intersection. Uh, and that's more common than it is uh, this, which is just like the port's closed. All right, Tom Baker reporting for us live there off of 7th uh, Avenue and uh, 880 in Oakland as we look live uh, at the 880 right now where one lane, the far left lane on the northbound side had opened to traffic just a short time ago as Amanda Quintana reported for us uh, just a short time ago. Uh, now we take you live to uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, this is where that protest seems to be going on very strong at the moment. It's been going on since just after 8 o'clock when protesters started blocking traffic. The traffic heading from Marin into San Francisco but traffic in both direction, imp directions are impacted by this. And uh, the bikes and pedestrian lanes are also affected by this as well. And you can see what is happening here. The protesters are holding a sign. Again, this is part of the uh, pro-Palestinian, the uh, folks who are against the Israel-Hamas war that's taking place right now in support of the Palestinians uh, in that part of the world uh, who are uh, being uh, affected uh, by the battles taking place between Israel and Hamas uh, right now. But uh, not sure how many people are taking part in this, but it's having a far reaching impact here. And, and, and uh, but you can see the protesters holding uh, that sign here. And uh, if what happened on 880 is any indication, these folks are taking part in that coordination uh, that is taking place across the country today and the world, focusing on identifying and blockading major choke points uh, in the economy. Uh, four different cities around the country. Uh, they're focusing on uh, production and circulation with the aim of causing the most economic impact. Obviously, that would do just that when you block uh, something like the Golden Gate Bridge, where people were heading into work uh, at the time when this happened, and now they cannot get there, and it's unclear when uh, they will start, uh, CHP and other authorities will start to eventually break this apart. When we saw this happen here a few months ago by a, a group uh, with a similar cause here, CHP was able to squash that fairly fairly quickly and uh, right after the protest started on the bridge uh, and it was the same direction and it was closer to the Marin County side at the time uh, where they tried to shut off traffic uh, CHP 
swoop right in minutes later and shut that down. That happened several weeks after the uh, uh, Bay Bridge Summit on the uh, Bay Bridge during the APEC Summit. Uh, that one uh, on the Golden Gate Bridge uh, that happened several weeks after that was shut down pretty quickly. This one does not appear to be shut down as quickly at all, um, and it's not clear why, and it's not clear if this, uh, the protesters in this case are doing what the protesters on 880 did, which was apparently locked themselves to uh, uh, barrels filled with concrete uh, at the time. It, I can't see anything like that here. All I can see are protesters with yellow vests holding signs uh, in support of the people uh, in Gaza right now. Uh, I don't know at this point yet because we haven't been able to get anyone onto the bridge to, to talk to the folks there uh, as uh, the pedestrian area is closed off at the moment. If the people in the vests are actually uh, part of the protest or, or part of law enforcement or part of crews there working on uh, dispersing the situation. But you can see the line on the right side of your screen of, of officers just waiting there, um, not engaging. It doesn't look like or appear that they're engaging with the demonstrators at, at this point or what their next move is going to be to try and uh, shut this down and get traffic moving. People who were coming into San Francisco from this area, you can either go to San Rafael and take the ferry. You can park right there and take the ferry into San Francisco if you need to get there. Or you can come all the way around to the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, uh, come down 80 and cross across the Bay Bridge if you choose to do that. That is one way of getting. But if you were planning on going somewhere close to San Francisco where the Golden Gate Bridge was, it's going to be a long trek to get uh, from uh, the west side or the, the, the east side of, of, of uh, San Francisco to the, uh, to the west side close to this area. So it's going to be an ongoing problem here for hours, too. Well, Andre, you mentioned going, trying to get alternate ways to get mm -hmm. uh, from the North Bay Marin County into San Francisco. You, obviously, you can't go across the Golden Gate Bridge because you see here it's completely shut down uh, because of that protest. But I do want to mention, take a look at this traffic map. If you plan on uh, going from the North Bay over uh, to the East Shore Freeway, you are going to have some challenges there. And that's because uh, you can see just how backed up the traffic is on that East Shore Freeway, that westbound 80 corridor. And usually this time of the morning, it's not too bad. We are long beyond what is typical of the height of the Monday morning commute. But remember that protest at 7th Street where Tom Vakar has been reporting from mm -hmm. that has shut down that uh, uh, part of the highway? Well, that is uh, creating a backlog all the way up into uh, the East Shore Freeway. So this is still having an impact uh, kind of Bay Area, in East, certainly East Bay, uh, wide. So uh, we usually have that uh, uh, traffic camera showing the East Shore, East Shore Freeway. We don't right now because it's showing uh, parts of the East Bay, but you can look at the number there and it's a 40 minute drive from the Carquinez Bridge to MacArthur Maze. And that is because of that protest that has blocked uh, 7th Street right there where you see that red line of uh, traffic just stop right there. And over here is where that uh, the closure of northbound 880 and that earlier protest 630 this morning still has uh, most of the northbound lanes of 880 completely shut down to traffic and that according to Amanda Quintana at the scene they have the CHP has just reopened one of the far left lanes in the northbound direction of 880. But these types of things, whenever you have a major thoroughfare like this, like 880 is during the morning commute, shut down for several hours at a time, it takes hours for the commute to recover. And I think that's what the protesters here, uh, that's their objective, is getting the attention of the general public. And, you know, comparing the two protests that have happened this morning during the morning commute, one on northbound 880, the other one on the Golden Gate Bridge, one is more, uh, I think, to have an impact, and that's a northbound 880. Far more vehicle traffic travels northbound 880 compared to the Golden Gate Bridge. I think the Golden Gate Bridge protest is probably meant to be more symbolic because you just don't have as many commuters right. going into San Francisco on the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, taking a look at this picture from uh, the chopper, this aerial view of the Golden Gate Bridge protest that is happening right now, I, I am reminded of what it looked like when during the Apex summer summit we had the Bay Bridge protest where in that case uh, some of the protesters coordinated and drove their vehicles onto the bridge at the same time parked all all at once and then got out and had uh, their banners and their signs and that's how they uh, had their demonstration. Uh, it looks like a very similar situation here because you saw a row of very uh, neatly parked cars mm -hmm. and people invest behind them. So 
uh, different situation than the protest uh, set up on northbound 880 where you had the protesters in that device, that sleeping dragon that kind of uh, forcibly links their arms together attached to those barrels. And Amanda's earlier report from a witness that a U-Haul truck had dropped those protesters off and then driven off. This looks like it's a different situation where the protesters may have driven onto the bridge in a coordinated effort to stop traffic all at once, which is exactly what happened uh, during a similar pro-Palestine protest during the APEC summit on the Bay Bridge back in November. But uh, a little a short time ago, you saw the aerial view kind of expand out to see uh, the backup into Marin County. And as you could imagine, it's pretty significant. Now let's switch over to uh, Amanda Quintana and Chip Vaughn's uh, live picture at northbound 880, where you see uh, beyond the traffic going, because now there's one lane in the far left lane of northbound 880. It's not a complete standstill. One lane just sneaking through there very carefully as law enforcement officers continue uh, to try and remove the remaining four protesters from that sleeping dragon device. That device is like a PVC type pipe in which protesters put their arms in and link their arms together and you are, as a protester, you are physically unable to pull your arm back out once you put it in. So removing a protester in that type of device involves taking a, a saw and sawing off the plastic pipe very carefully uh, to remove someone's arms and unlink them uh, from that device and therefore open up the freeway and open up the highway and dissolve that protest. So that's why here at northbound 880, people, uh, traffic has been pretty much at a standstill since 6.30 this morning when those six or seven protesters uh, linked arms using that device. And it's taken several hours to uh, break that protest up. And you can see they're still working on that now, even as one lane of far left, uh, far left lane of traffic in the northbound direction is finally able to pass. We have a new bit of video we'd like to share with our viewers here. And this is essentially law enforcement saying, don't you try it at the Bay Bridge. Of course, the uh, 880 lanes there on northbound 880 in Oakland, just before you hit Jack London Square, uh, those have been stopped. Golden Gate Bridge at a standstill. We have video here that appears to show uh, CHP officers essentially stationing themselves uh, on the right and left shoulders of the Bay Bridge. You see this here, perhaps a visual deterrent, if you will, in case anybody was considering doing something the same or similar on the Bay Bridge. So again, this obviously taken by, if I can ask the producer, was this one of our crews driving through? Might this video be from a viewer? It's obviously dash cam video. Yes, yeah, was that, um, cousins, cousins. So, okay, one of our photographers yeah, here making cousins, his way yeah. from Oakland yeah. into San Francisco. Just sharing that there are CHP officers parked there uh, on the eastern span of the Bay Bridge. Something to keep in mind, of course, this was the scene of that major right shutdown here, during this the very APEC. spot that we're driving over. Remember that? During the APEC yeah. summit back in November. Yeah. That lasted yeah. for hours. Hours. Yeah. Ali, among the three of us, you were the only one there on the actual uh, bridge deck. And, and something else that happened in that case that I don't know if it's the case at the Golden Gate. Remember, protesters uh, locked their cars and they threw the keys in the water. And that is one of the many factors that took law enforcement hours to sort of unwind the mess that had been created. So again, many of us are drawing comparisons to what we've experienced or at least been able to watch over the past months here and the number of protests that have popped up for the same cause, the Free Palestine. So again, as we compare sort of, we have three major scenes right now. We have uh, Interstate 880 through the heart of Oakland, the northbound lane shut down except for one lane, the, the fast lane, if you will, the far left, just barely people getting through there. The second situation is the one you see in the heart. Oh, there you go, back to Oakland here. Uh, we have seen this shot and really it hasn't changed that much. If you look very carefully at all those lanes of traffic that are stopped, that far left lane for a minute, we did see cars moving through slowly on that fast lane. If you're heading on northbound 880 past the Coliseum, I don't see those cars moving too quickly or at all right now. Southbound really isn't a problem. Second scene that we've seen develop here chronologically would be this, the Golden Gate Bridge. Traffic stopped in both directions. Actual protesters are in the roadway on the southbound lanes, but law enforcement is taking up the northbound lanes, so there's no traffic getting through either pedestrians or those uh, on bikes and feet. And then, of course, we have the situation developing much closer to the port of Oakland there, just north of the scene on 880. Straight back to our Amanda Quintana. She arrived at the scene just after 6 o'clock here in Oakland. Uh, as you have new developments to bring us, I understand? Yeah, so it seems like they are getting ready to remove the third person. We've been watching um, as they saw away. I know Allie was kind of talking about the 
the device that could be used here, but they have definitely been sawing for a while. Um, you saw a lot of dust from that, trying to get these protesters out of the barrels. Their arms are in those barrels. Um, they were holding up that tarp to protect the protesters as well. And then we saw the jackhammer again. So, you know, each layer, they're using something different to get to the protester, to remove them. Um, and again, just the left lane is open. Uh, for a while, it seemed like they were sending all of the traffic off of 880, just the exit before this, but they have finally allowed cars to come through this area of 880, and they're on the left just going through that one lane. But again, slowly but surely working to get through that barrel, uh, which we were, we're thinking has some kind of concrete in it. Uh, that's what they're using the jackhammer on and then getting that protester out. So two of the six have been removed so far and they're working on this third one. Uh, but we could kind of see them, you know, uh, moving around uh, with the tarp, uh, getting ready to remove that third person. So still very slow movements out here, only one lane and still working very slowly to get that person removed and off of the freeway. Amanda, can you tell what um, what has happened to the other people who were already taken uh, out by uh, by law enforcement, the ones that were cut free from the binds uh, to that perhaps uh, uh, barrel with the with the concrete in it? So they had police had these uh, black vans that they had parked behind their line there. Uh, there were multiple black vans. There's only one there still. So it seemed like they brought them. You know, it's kind of hard to see because police kind of huddle around that person, get them quickly uh, over there. But it seems like they put them in one of those vans and then took off. So there is still one van, I believe, back there. And then there's also, you know, an ambulance, all these uh, first responders getting ready to, uh, you know, help out if needed. But it seems like they were taken away in one of those police vans. All right, Amanda, and we're also getting word now that uh, there are arrests that are being made now uh, on the Golden Gate Bridge. This has been going on since just after 8 o'clock this morning in which uh, pro-Palestinian protesters or those against the war between Israel and Hamas, uh, in which Palestinians are, are caught in the middle here uh, in Gaza, uh, they want that war to stop and they have... Uh, uh, used today as a day to really stifle uh, the economy of certain cities, San Francisco, Oakland, around the country. So there are reports coming in from Philadelphia that this is happening there as well in some capacity, something similar to this. Uh, so uh, we see uh, CHP in this video uh, taking someone in that vest. Uh, they seem to have their hands behind their back, which would indicate they're being taken into custody uh, by the uh, CHP officers. But it does not look uh, like it's a tense situation uh, between the protesters and law enforcement. We've often seen these happen before, and it's, you know, the, the last time this happened here on the 14th on the bridge, it was not a contentious issue then either. Police simply went out to the bridge and escorted the people that were there off of the bridge. Uh, much different, though, back in November, uh, where it got a little bit heated at times. Uh, people were sat on the side, but people remain relatively calm. Uh, so, so far right now, we see one person. Again, this is a small group, just like the group that's on uh, 880 right now who are blocking traffic on the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, heading in the uh, southbound direction from Marin County that has closed both sections of the bridge and the bike lane and the pedestrian lane too are also affected by all of this. Uh, some of the people that are on this side of the banner appear to be wearing vests. They may be involved in this protest wearing that vest, just like the person we saw uh, being taken by CHP here. Uh, when this happened, this particular protest, uh, this one started uh, just before, uh, just after 8 o'clock this morning. And by the way, we've showed you 880 and we've shown you uh, what's happening on the Golden Gate Bridge, but there were smaller protests that were taking place. There was one even on 880 by Broadway in downtown Oakland uh, before the major one. Uh, that cleared up fairly quickly uh, in addition to the major one that has blocked traffic on 880 right now. Here's another person in this live picture that you just saw a moment ago from our chopper uh, taking another person that appeared uh, into custody at this moment. Although it's not clear to us what has triggered uh, police officers to take these people into custody. 
at this point, if they have done anything, or if police are just making their moves. But it seems fairly calm at this point uh, when they're taking part in that. Uh, but going back to what I said just a moment ago, uh, there have been several smaller protests. There was indeed one by the West Oakland BART station uh, that leads right to the protests. That's off of 7th and 880 in Oakland by the Port of Oakland. Uh, and then there was one in Broadway that lasted about 45 minutes. But the big one, of course, is this one here. And this is a beautiful picture here wow. because traffic is starting to flow again. Uh, six, about just over six miles back from the spot where those uh, people had chained themselves uh, right by Fifth Avenue and Embarcadero at 880. Uh, the traffic there, uh, at least one lane was open, but it looks like more might be open or there might be clearing traffic. There's an exit going to that shopping plaza where the, um, the uh, uh, there's a shopping plaza there right off the right off the highway. That's a potential exit for people to get off of uh, as well if they want to get off the highway and try to take the back roads to get around uh, this mess here. But for the first time in uh, several hours, we are seeing traffic in the northbound lanes. They're moving mm -hmm. in that other picture from our rooftop camera. Uh, let's this is the camera that is fixed uh, above Interstate 880 by the Coliseum. And just about 20 minutes ago, this was a solid parking lot in the northbound lanes because just about all lanes of northbound 880 had been shut down because of the protest. Then about 15 minutes ago, Amanda informed us that one lane was open. We start, started to see traffic move a little bit in that northbound direction. And now uh, it looks like they must have opened another lane possibly, uh, or as Andre mentioned, traffic is just being diverted off this highway entirely because now you see a lot of traffic moving and uh, you don't see the backup that you saw there earlier. I don't know if we can go back to the Golden Gate Bridge pictures that we had because one thing that I noticed uh, the p person that we saw being led away with their hands behind their back uh, wearing a yellow vest earlier this morning when we saw this aerial view there was a line of people behind that first row of cars also wearing yellow vests mm -hmm. so I wonder if, uh, if police believe that uh, those were some of the protesters that may have driven their cars to this point you see what looks like uh, law enforcement officers and uh, uh, forming a line and uh, not letting people pass but we don't see the banner anymore that was here earlier uh, calling for uh, free Palestine a and uh, we don't see any signs from the protesters that they had been holding up uh, up until just a short time ago. But uh, we do know that there have been some arrests made at the Golden Gate Bridge, which is where this scene you're looking at live is happening. You still see about a, a handful of people or so uh, in front of some of those parked vehicles there uh, on the Golden Gate Bridge in that southbound direction. Now, in the meantime, both directions of the Golden Gate Bridge are completely shut down uh, to traffic it, as police, as you can see there in the middle of the span, uh, continue to just sort of stand back and observe the situation. Uh, let's turn things now over to Tom Baker, who is at a third scene, a third protest. This is happening at 7th Street near the Port of Oakland. Uh, we can send it over to you, Tom. What can you tell us about what's happening there now? Well, I'll tell you, what we have here is a situation where somebody is pulled up and they're uh, kind of uh, not uh, trying to anger the crowd. They're honking horn in support, and, of course, you're getting the uh, shot back. Two things I've learned. We've gone now four times across the street to see if we could talk to somebody, and there's a real discipline going on here because what we've been told is that there is a spokesperson, but that spokesperson is up on the 880 and not down here to talk to the media where the media is. So uh, everybody else is not talking. One woman over there is called a legal observer. She's there just to make sure that, uh, from the standpoint of having another witness, that uh, the cops do what they're supposed to do and the protesters do what they're supposed to do. So she's kind of making notes on all of that stuff. The other thing I learned, which is very interesting, this comes from a super reliable source, Bill Abuti, who runs AB Trucking over in the port. He says not one container is being moved right now. He said that is, uh, anybody says the containers are moving, those containers would have to be somewhere they were already off the premises or their containers being brought in, but they're not going through the port because the port is in effect shut down in terms of actually moving moving containers, and that's what ports are all about. So the situation continues here. They're uh, talking a little bit. The spokesperson uh, is up there on the freeway, not available, and uh, the freeway is still blocked. Reporting live, Tom Baker, KTVU Fox 2 News, back to you. Tom, do we still have the, the few number of police in vehicles surrounding the scene, not right up on it? And have they still not given an order to disperse because that really is the first thing that has to happen when it comes to the dismantling of a protest, right? Sure. Now, there's just uh, there's one 
a police car right over here off to uh, my right, your left, and then there's one behind the bridge abutment over here. And normally what that means is they're just there observing, they're in radio contact with uh, their commanders, and they're just uh, taking a look at what's going on. If they were going to start to move people, then they would probably bring a bus in because this is enough people would warrant a bus or some vans or something like that. And then on top of that, what they would also do is have more personnel here. None of that is going on. So whatever pinch point this is, is not a terribly important one uh, to, you know, to law enforcement at this point. And I say at this point because it could become terribly important later, but it is blocking Interstate 880, which is, as we know, the major uh, traffic, truck traffic for the, uh, the East Bay. So that situation uh, is much unchanged. Uh, one truck actually did drive by carrying a container and honked uh, in appreciation of what the folks are doing here. Most of them just pass by silently as this one is doing, and uh, they're just trying to find a way in the port or uh, another route out so that they don't have any more problems. This is not within the actual borders of the port, so right. these are public roads and uh, the trucks can travel on them. That's what's going on here, but I thought it was interesting that there's enough discipline enough discipline that nobody's willing to talk except for the PR person or the, the public information officer, whatever you would call that person, the spokesperson. They're up on the freeway and uh, there's no container movement going on at the port. Can you give us an idea for those who might not know West Oakland as, as well as you do, what all else is around there? It's interesting, if you stop traffic on a freeway, you're stopping people from you know going to work and school and doctor's appointments and who knows what. That part of town really is sort of all focused on the port, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of industrial stuff around here. A lot of these transfer warehouses, and that can be very important because that's how you get, uh, you know, you get stuff in, onto a truck that may not be a container truck that's uh, picking a part of the container's load and all of that. That stuff. There's, in fact, a big. Uh, uh, one of these companies actually on the port called GSC Logistics, very large company, and uh, they take off a lot of stuff that you would find in many, many stores and all of that stuff. So as a result, that's also blocked off. And in addition to that, of course, you have the main post office for Oakland. You have the West Oakland BART station, which I say is open because that's not on the port property, but uh, it is yet another thing that's being somewhat impacted by this because, you know, Ubers and people dropping people off and picking them up by there could be impacted by this stuff. So it's kind of a ripple effect, but the main, main thing is a port. And this port is responsible directly for 78,000 jobs, both here at the port and at uh, facilities that are directly, absolutely dependent upon the port, such as transfer warehouses and trucking facilities and all of that stuff. So this is not some small thing. This is very significant. Uh, but it's one of those things that's kind of out of sight, out of mind, as opposed to the Golden Gate Bridge or the Bay Bridge or another place you might block where it becomes very painfully obvious that you have to do something about it not quite so painful here and yet not seeing anything that would suggest that the police are, have had a belly full of it or the uh, uh, the uh, you know management of the city has had a belly full of it they're just letting it ride right now and uh, we'll just stand by to see what we find and you know even though Tom there's not a lot of commercial or recognizable uh, buildings or places by that uh, freeway exit where you are at 7th Street uh, shutting that exit down because of that protest where you are is having an impact uh, on traffic I wonder if I could bring up my uh, traffic maps one more time so we can show where exactly Tom is and how this is affecting things. Uh, the, he, he is at southbound uh, 880 just off of 7th Street and that's uh, this section right here and you see the red and the traffic backup extending into the MacArthur maze because of it and that is leading to uh, backing up all the way into the East Shore Freeway. So all this slow traffic you see here is because of that one off-ramp closure at 7th Street. So this is having a, a ripple effect on traffic, even in places where you wouldn't necessarily uh, expect it. Let's go back to that 880 picture. What oh, a wow. difference of night and day. Wow. Uh, this, uh, on the right hand of the screen, which is the northbound lanes, up until uh, just about 20 minutes ago, this was a complete parking lot with nothing moving because of that protest six miles north of this vantage point at northbound 880 and Embarcadero. Now, as we've heard, they are slowly, CHP and other law enforcement officers, slowly uh, 
cutting some of the uh, devices that protesters had used to lock arms and block the freeway. They're slowly starting to remove the protesters from those devices. It's a careful, uh, slow process, as you can imagine, because it literally involves saws to cut off plastic pipes that the protesters put their arms in. The, the whole idea behind it is that once you put your arm in this device, it's called a sleeping dragon, you cannot willingly remo physically remove your arm from it unless that device is cut off of your arm, which was a situation that Amanda uh, observed and was describing earlier this morning. Now we know that three protesters have been uh, removed from that device, so they've been able to slowly, the CHP has been able to slowly reopen uh, some of the lanes in that northbound direction. Uh, taking a look at the CHP log, they haven't updated it just yet. It still says that uh, northbound 880 is still closed, but uh, the Golden Gate Bridge is closed as well, the north and southbound directions. And that's what you see in that uh, left-hand picture, that aerial view, uh, where you see since just before 8 o'clock this morning, as I remember when we saw the first little blip of red on the traffic maps at the Golden Gate Bridge, which is unusual because there's usually never a backup on the Golden Gate Bridge in the morning. Uh, not a lot of commuters uh, drive that direction in the morning, certainly not as many as there used to be, uh, say, a decade ago. So it's not. this is not a major commute thoroughfare fair, but certainly if you are part of a demonstration and a protest group trying to get attention and get a good picture, uh, this symbolically is an important view, showing your protest shutting down both directions of the Golden Gate Bridge, which is, of course, as we know, an internationally known symbol of the Bay Area. Uh, the protesters, pro-Palestinian protesters, trying to call for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war, and uh, they are, this is part of a coordinated effort where they're doing doing similar uh, demonstrations on major thoroughfares and uh, chokeholds of certain commerce, lines of commerce, in about 50 cities across the globe. So Golden Gate Bridge is the site of one of those demonstrations, and they are certainly getting a lot of attention to their cause with not that many protesters involved. Because if you look at this picture, we have seen some people being uh, led away uh, with their hands tied behind their back, uh, arrested for this protest. But in general, we have not seen that many people. It's not like we saw dozens and dozens of people walking onto the bridge taking part in this protest. This appears to be uh, a kind of a coordinated effort involving some drivers who drove onto the Golden Gate Bridge, which is similar to what happened during the APEC summit with the demonstration, uh, the pro-Palestine demonstration that happened on the Bay Bridge, where you had a row of a line of cars all slowly traveling and then parked all in a row, which is kind of what we see here on the, Gold on the Golden Gate Bridge, and the protesters got out blocking traffic and put up their signs. Now we don't see any banners. We really don't see that many protesters there anymore, at least not what we can see from this aerial view, but we do still see a law enforcement presence there and we do want to let people know that the Golden Gate Bridge is still shut down in both directions. And that includes also the sidewalks and the pedestrian walkways on the Golden Gate Bridge. Do not think that you can uh, drive to the Golden Gate Bridge toll plaza right here and walk up onto the bridge to get a view of what's going on here. You cannot. It, it is closed uh, to all drivers and all pedestrians and has been since just before 8 o'clock this morning. Can you take us through your experience when you were on the bridge deck back during the APEC summit and protesters shut down the Bay Bridge? How, essentially, how does it work? Protesters are there, law enforcement shows up. I assume the, the order to disperse is the first part of the removal process. Take it from there, as was your experience when you were on the Bay Bridge. Yeah, that is always, uh, with any protest, that there's always uh, that process or that protocol of law enforcement officers having to say this is an unlawful assembly mm. please disperse so there's always that verbal warning and usually you hear that on a megaphone and when you do that's when everyone gets a little bit tense and starts to watch and see well what happens next if people don't if protesters don't listen mm -hmm. um, but in most cases I mean we've seen many of these protests in the last several months so I think at this point um, the CHP and other law enforcement officers and the protesters and demonstrators as well are uh, pretty organized and they kind of go through the motions and they know mm -hmm. what to expect. That's why I, I, we're not seeing a lot of tension or conflict. Mm -hmm. It's just the protesters get there, do what, they, what they've planned to do, uh, do it calmly. 
uh, shut down traffic, get their message across. We all end up covering it because of the huge traffic impact mm -hmm. that it has. And then law enforcement responds. And then it's just kind of this uh, slow unfolding mm -hmm. stalemate, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. kind of what we're seeing here. But with that in mind, it could take several hours before mm -hmm. the Golden Gate Bridge reopens in both directions. We have finally seen uh, the northbound direction of 880 where that other protest happened. Uh, now it's completely empty. So uh, I, I wonder if we can check back in with Amanda Quintana to find out how many more lanes of traffic mm -hmm. have been uh, reopened. At last check, she said three of the six protesters who had been blocking the freeway have been taken into custody and removed. Uh, and, but, uh, and they've been letting in maybe one, two lanes of traffic, I believe, in that uh, northbound direction. But taking a look at this hmm. picture, this is 880. Uh, in the foreground is the southbound lanes. This is from our rooftop camera in our studios in Jack London Square. Uh, the protest that uh, happened in northbound 880 is just beyond to the right of uh, the frame that you're seeing here. And we are seeing still a, a number of law enforcement vehicles on the right part of your screen, in the middle of the screen. And you do see, see one or two cars passing in that northbound direction. This is different than what we saw an hour ago when there was no, there were no vehicles getting through whatsoever at northbound 880. Now things have kind of loosened up a little bit. Our right, Tom Vicar uh, is back live at the scene. And Tom, um, I was going over some of the directives, this uh, organization that organizes protests, and this is not, they're not all tied together. It's a coalition. They ask these different groups across the country to uh, be part of this and, and, and mobilize. And, and right. one of the reasons that they said, Tom, uh, I know you have some new information, but I just wanted to pass along this to you because you've been trying to talk to those protesters um, and they are only funneling that information through one person. But they say uh, one of their key motives here is not to attack each other in the press or on social media. So they're trying to channel everything into one uh, into one person so that message does not, uh, their, their, their message of supporting the Palestinian people and launching this uh, massive blockade is not diluted. Uh, tell us what else you've learned uh, from the scene there. Well, I can tell you one of the things that's really interesting is this is a much smaller situation here. When I first got here, there were about uh, 30, 35 people and maybe 20 bikes. Now there's more like 20, 25 people and 15 to 20 bikes. So people have left the scene and I saw some of them walking up towards uh, the post office, which is this way. And what is interesting about that is, is that at some point in time, you know, people are either going to stay here for the long haul or they're not. And that may explain this kind of uh, coalition kind of thing, because certain people think maybe they made their point and it's time to go. But they made it very clear that there was one spokesperson that was going to talk, and that person is up on the freeway. I did notice also that if you look, you see a few people walking down off the freeway, but just as many people, a few more, in fact, have walked back up the freeway. So whatever's happening up on the freeway is not quite done, whatever that turns out to be. There are, again, no more police officers here. Uh, there are no more, you know, standers by looking that might, you know, want to go and fill in the line. The truth of the matter is this is a dissipating kind of situation here. Now, whether or not that is going to s signal some sort of a end to this uh, voluntarily, uh, we don't know yet. But I can tell you that it's just a lot fewer people here. And as a result of that, you know, it's just not quite as a, a formidable uh, a situation because there are a lot of spaces in between there. Now, the problem with that is somebody might try to do something stupid like, we, you know, put their car through there, you know, try to force their way through, which would be stupid. Uh, but that's a situation now where you just have a lot fewer people uh, in the, uh, on the 7th Street entrance to the 880. Just thought you should know that. And again, uh, Bill Abuti from AB Truck, he says that no uh, containers being moved whatsoever. If those containers were not on a truck coming in, they're not going to get in. And if they were not on a truck uh, outside of the port where they have some yards where they can uh, park their vehicles all night, uh, those are the only ones that are seriously moving around, and that's because they weren't in the port at all. That's the situation here. I thought you should know. All right. Three major moving scenes here, Tom Baker. Thank you. Behind, behind the scenes here, we had a chance to talk with uh, CHP spokesperson Andrew Barclay. We asked James Torres to talk with him about the situation happening, yes, at the Golden Gate Bridge, also 880 in Oakland, and then much closer to the port. This is uh, James's conversation with CHP's Andrew Barclay. Let's listen.
Well, every situation is different. I think that's the, the most important thing to understand here. You know, there's there's no routine response to this type of call. Um, really, it takes uh, individuals getting on scene, assessing the situation, determining, you know, if this is simply somebody standing blocking a lane, are these individuals that have utilized devices to inhibit our, our response, as we have seen today. Um, so really, it, it comes down to figuring out what we're dealing with and then getting the appropriate tools there to, to deal with that. How do you get the messaging out to drivers who have already started their commute, who are stuck in the traffic? How do you let them know what's going on? Well, you know, fortunately, that's where I think our, our media partners are a great ally in that. Uh, you know, these, these incidents, as you have seen today and, and as we've seen at other times, are very spur of the moment. These are incidents that pop up incredibly quick. Um, and fortunately, we we are we have a lot of great media outlets here in the Bay Area that pick it up equally as quick as well. Um, very often, within you know a minute of it happening. Um, so you know we're we're fortunate to work with all of you and get our message out. And, and you know between you and every other outlet out there, that message is, is pushed. Well, you know, I think the the tough part about this here is you know you have traffic that stopped right at the peak of a morning commute, especially on a Monday morning when we might expect uh, you know some of the people who are commuting for work or for school or what have you um, right. are, are doing that more often on a Monday probably than uh, any other day yeah. of the week. So, And you have that around the 6, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock time frame where we're seeing such a large number of drivers. And then having these people held for hours, um, you know, at this point today, specific to the incidents we're seeing on 880 in the Golden Gate, where do we stand? What What can you do next? Well, right now, and as we've seen, so let's, let's look at them separate. So 880, um, as you probably have seen at this point, uh, we have been able to remove individuals from one or two lanes. So we've actually been able to start getting traffic through. Obviously, not every lane. We're still working through that. Um, but being able to get people moving to start. Now, again, beyond that, it, it's not only, you know, removing people, as I mentioned very often and as we're, we're seeing in some of this uh, video, um, you know, there are devices that are placed that significantly slow down our progress. So uh, these are these are things that we have to work through. Again, our, our goal is to get lanes open as quickly as possible. We just have to continue working through the things that we're finding, remove them, get these individuals in custody, and clear the lanes. Now, when you say get individuals in custody, is that still part of your job, or are you bringing in local police departments to do that part? So if it's on the freeway, the California Highway Patrol does have jurisdiction. So in both of these incidents, we're, all, we're talking about 880 and the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, so that is going to be our jurisdiction. Now, due to, you know, if there's higher numbers of people, we may have allied agencies that are assisting us with transporting, things like that. I will say and, and always have to recognize our allied agency partners that are there with us right now. Uh, we've got the Oakland Police Department, the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, uh, San Francisco Police Department, Golden Gate Bridge Patrol. Um, so, you know, we are fortunate to have a large number of resources available to us as we work through these incidents. And, you know, Andrew, um, this isn't the first time, obviously, that this has uh, happened here in the Bay Area. And it's not even, uh, you know, it's happened recently, too. Mm -hmm. When you make these arrests and when you try to break down these organized protests and demonstrations, are you getting a chance to talk to these people about what, uh, you know, are they fully aware uh, of the magnitude that uh, they're affecting people? Uh, you know, do, do they kind of give you some sort of insight in what they're thinking? So, I mean, ultimately, you would really have to speak with them. I'm, I'm not going to speak for individuals who choose to block our freeways. Uh, I, I think that regardless of who you are, whether you live in the Bay Area or not, it is very apparent that if you block a freeway during rush hour, you are going to be causing a lot of inconvenience for a lot of people. So, um, you know, what, what they say to us, we'll put forward in our reports that we refer up for potential prosecution, but ultimately you would need to speak with them to, to get a better understanding of their mindset. What crimes are they committing uh, in order to be arrested for this? I can send you a, a number of them, but essentially uh, anytime that you're, you know, blocking a freeway, um, there's actually specific laws that relate to blocking bridges. Um, so th there's a number of them. I'm, I'd be happy to send you a list. And actually, a lot of them are what we utilized during APEC when the Bay Bridge was blocked. Yeah, you know, my last question for you, Andrew, you know, when you, this is, 
these are large demonstrations, uh, and especially mm -hmm. the one on the Golden Gate Bridge looks like there are a good amount of people who are involved in this. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you handle the mass number of people? Are you bringing in a mass number of officers to handle that, or you know, what's the strategy to do that? Yeah, yeah and I, I talked about it briefly, you know, a minute ago, but. Um, you know, first of all, it's going to start with us requesting additional CHP officers from neighboring areas. Fortunately, as a state law enforcement agency, we have officers up and down the freeway corridor. So we're able to request additional officers from, from different offices. Then beyond that, and as I also already mentioned, um, we're going to call out to our, our local partners, our, our police departments, our sheriff's office, and we're going to ask them to come out and assist with this. Um, you know, Golden Gate Bridge has their own patrol. They're able to come out and assist us with this. So really, it's a it's an all hands on deck call to get the resources that we need to try to alleviate this. And of course, that takes away from other responsibilities you may be doing at yep. that time for those Absolutely. period of two or three hours. Yes. All right. Andrew Barclay with California Highway Patrol. We appreciate you talking with us, sir. All right, getting the latest there from the CHP, talking about sort of the methodical process of, you know, recognizing and then clearing protests like this. Ali, you and I were talking just for a moment here. The uh, protest that happened back in November on the Bay Bridge during the APEC summit resulted in dozens of arrests. A couple of people said they were wrongfully arrested. Uh, that case is sort of still making its way through. So it'll be interesting to see if we fast forward past today what today's action will result in. But again, this is very much a situation of, and we've touched on this a number of times, if you've been with us for the hours now that we been covering this breaking news. The protesters know exactly what they're doing. They know what parameters they need to work within. Law enforcement also knows that they just can't run up and, you know, clear everybody off the road. So there's a process uh, sort of from both sides, and it takes a very long time uh, to draw out. And, of course, that time feels even longer if you're the, the person in that first row of cars there, second row, people being stuck on the bridge or stuck on 880 for hours. So the organization uh, A15 is uh, what this uh, loose organization is calling themselves. Uh, of uh, groups across the country that are part of this and then even sent out before this uh, mutual solidarity agreement for April 15th. We will act in solidarity with each other. Uh, it, it, and this is a, a part of their agreement uh, of these groups participating uh, in this. It says every city will take responsibility for choosing and planning their own local actions. Uh, fellow organizers will not discourage or denounce each other's plans because solidarity means affinity, not ownership. And so these are the instructions that were sent out uh, on this uh, website, a15action.com, uh, to the groups that are participating. So not one uh, single organization here, um, but uh, a makeup of people who are uh, supporters of the people of Palestine, um, do not want to see Israel's war continue uh, against Hamas and its effects on the people in Palestine right now. And uh, so these people got together, these folks got together, these groups got together to, to uh, form what they are calling an economic blockade. They, they say they are trying to disrupt the economies of these major cities, San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Port of Oakland here in Oakland, 880, a major thoroughfare through uh, Oakland uh, and Alameda County. And uh, so these groups got together to take part in this uh, together. They've even uh, launched a, a, a fund uh, to raise money to get people out on bail who are arrested in their protest and uh, set up legal defense uh, for the folks who are arrested uh, or may get arrested or detained as part of this. We've seen that people are being taken into custody here as we look live at the Golden Gate Bridge once again, where we've seen at least a couple people who were once uh, about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, holding up a sign. Uh, calling out the, uh, the war in Gaza right now. Uh, that sign is gone now, and some people were at least taken into custody, not sure uh, if they were indeed arrested as of yet. Uh, we want to get now to, uh, to Christian Kaftan. Uh, he is over the Golden Gate. He just made it to the scene right by the toll plaza there. Christian, uh, man, it, it is a mess out there this morning, and you're, you're standing in front of vehicles. I guess those are work vehicles that are, that are blocking traffic, trying to contain the situation. What can you tell us about That's what's right. happening? That's right. We're on Doyle Drive as people are trying to uh, make their way over. If you might have just caught me, uh, we're trying to uh, uh, gesture to one of the people who is trapped here. Uh, you can see, uh, if we turn to our right as we walk on over, you can see the line of cars here along Doyle Drive. And, you know, this is uh, people who have been stuck here, uh, in some cases, for hours. Hi, we talked to you a little earlier. Uh, just wanted to talk to you about your morning so far. You said that you'd been trying to come on over here. You'd been trying to make your way to work. And what happened as you tried to make your way to work? Uh, what happened now? 
No, earlier when you were trying to make your way, you said you were trying to come in at around 7 o'clock, right? And they stopped you? Yeah, from there. Maybe I'm on that area. Yeah, they, they stopped here. They, they told us that the left lane, you can go on the left lane, not on the right lane. That's why I go on the right lane. But all of a sudden, the, that car, uh, that truck, there, there's a barricade already. That's why we cannot go on, on Marin County. And it's important for you, you said you needed to get over there because you're a, a health care provider, right? So if you can't get to work, what happens? Uh, I, I don't know. I just, uh, I just need to stay here so I can go over there in, at Tiburon. To Tiburon. Okay, well, good luck. And I know that you had to get Micah out of the car so that uh, Micah could take a little relief break. Uh, this is just one lady who is uh, stuck here in the traffic uh, that uh, 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 stopped traffic going along Doyle Drive. Uh, we can see certainly dozens of cars. Uh, as you said earlier, we just arrived on scene, so I don't know exactly how far back it goes. We also know that there was a, uh, a Golden Gate Transit bus that's down there as well. And uh, in the last, oh, 10, 15 minutes since we've been here, we saw uh, dozens of people come off of that bus and make their way over here to the uh, welcome station. People saying that they uh, need to relieve themselves. They've been stuck here for hours. People saying they need to stretch their legs for a little bit. Uh, the situation still unfolding here. As you can see, traffic is completely stopped in the north and southbound lanes. And uh, Joseph, if we can swing around. We're going to start walking over this way. Uh, you referenced those vehicles there. You can see those vehicles from the Golden Gate Bridge Authority blocking any access uh, across the bridge. As we walk a little bit closer, uh, we're going to try to see if we can give you guys a shot so you can see that the pedestrian access on the bridge is also blocked. Ordinarily, under these circumstances, uh, you'd be able to walk on the right-hand side. That is the uh, eastern side of the span. Uh, that's what people do to uh, walk across the bridge and enjoy this uh, tourist attraction here that uh, is right here in our backyard. Right now, we are hearing that that access is blocked. And we've also heard that there is a bus uh, actually up on the bridge, perhaps preparing to take the protesters into custody or get them off of the bridge. Uh, at this point, we don't have a timeline. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Uh, we're waiting to get information from the Golden Gate Bridge Authority. We're waiting to get information from uh, California Highway Patrol to figure out just how long or if there is a time frame that has been established at this point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give you one more live look. Uh, if you're familiar with the bridge, you know that as a suspension bridge, it bows just a little bit in the middle. And right over the bow, right over our sight line, that is where a lot of the protesters are. We can just see the very peak of a red light flashing in that area. That is where we believe a lot of the action is focused right now uh, with uh, CHP, uh, probably uh, uh, bridge authority uh, on uh, the span trying to uh, either clear those protesters, trying to get people uh, uh, out of the way and reopen the span. Again, at this point, we are still waiting for a timeline to figure out how long that's going to take, what that's going to look like. Right now, you can see we're standing right in the middle of the road, so clearly no vehicles passing one way or the other for right now. We're live in San Francisco on the south end of the Golden Gate Bridge span. Uh, Christian Kaftan, back to you. Christian, uh, we, we just checked, by the way, we, we, we tried to contact, or we did contact the Golden Gate Bridge Authority. They, they referred everything over to, to CHP at this point, as you might imagine, because they're in the thick of it right now. And as for uh, taking the people who are taken into custody away, I can tell you, I saw one of the, the bands there that uh, pe police used to, to load people in there uh, on the bridge right now. But we, we, from what I understand here, the traffic on heading from northbound, southbound on the bridge that hadn't made it over the bridge yet, backed up uh, past Sausalito area. Is the traffic that bad on, on, on the other end where you are now as well? Well, so we are on the south end of the span, and this is what I was showing you earlier. You can see uh, the traffic here backed up along Doyle Drive as it approaches, and it looks like there's actually a white vehicle that's trying to turn around on the bridge or on the approach to the bridge you can see oh, yeah. perhaps mm -hmm. yep. some of those vehicles are turning around and going the wrong way down it looks like there's somebody in uh, a uniform or in uh, uh, a bright fluorescent vest perhaps directing that traffic uh, again since this is a very dynamic situation we can't be uh, 
here and there at the same time. So we don't know exactly what's going on. I can just describe what I'm seeing. And we do see that person in a fluorescent jacket, fluorescent vest. We have seen, uh, it looked like two or three vehicles. There's another one right now that appears to be turning around, uh, perhaps to go the wrong way down Doyle Drive just to get some of the vehicles uh, off of the approach to the bridge. And that should give you a, a sense of uh, just how many vehicles are up here. From our position now, we can see uh, about, oh, two dozen vehicles. Uh, presumably, it goes on beyond the turn there, and you can see that bus down there that uh, we told you about earlier where some uh, passengers got off earlier. Uh, so hoping that some of these people can leave this area. The woman that we talked to earlier live just a moment ago told me uh, that she is a home health care provider and she says that she needs to uh, stay here because her patient needs her in Tiburon. So she says that uh, if she turns around and goes home, her patient will have nobody to care for him. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why she is staying here. We talked with another woman who told us uh, that while she may sympathize with the message that the protesters have, she said she believes that this tactic of blocking the bridge, blocking roads around the Bay Area, blocking roads across the country can actually do the exact opposite and make people uh, angry and blame them and turn them from being perhaps sympathetic to their cause to being antagonistic towards their cause. Christian, we did, while you were just talking to us, see a couple of cars driving in the southbound lanes behind you. Were they emergency type vehicles? Did they look like regular vehicles? On the other side, uh, Joseph, on the other side of the, the, fr the freeway, in the southbound direction, we saw a couple of cars driving right behind Christian, not in the uh, northbound direction, which you're showing us, but across the barricade right. in the southbound direction. Right. So those vehicles in the southbound direction, I, I don't know what those vehicles were. They, they weren't vehicles coming across the span, but there are some vehicles that are able to come out of the Presidio. You can see uh, that the Presidio is right over here, and you can see that there are some vehicles that are kind of making their way through. Now, this isn't a vehicle, this Prius that's going Got along it. here yeah. is not a vehicle that came across the span. It's just coming through the Presidio. So you might see a few vehicles kind of making their way through like that. They're not emergency vehicles. They're people who are uh, either leaving the Presidio, people who are perhaps hoping to kind of find their way over to the bridge. In fact, that's how Joseph and I made our way here through that exact path through the Presidio. Okay, hold on just a moment. There's people the, shouting. the person, yeah, this person here is telling people uh, to get back in their vehicles, and he's actually sending those vehicles back down. Uh, Doyle Drive. So this is what we were talking about before, and we're starting to get some confirmation that, in fact, they are turning vehicles around here uh, on the approach to the Golden Gate, uh, an indication that they don't believe uh, that this is going to be cleared anytime soon. So uh, as we look at the scene, we're going to make our way down a little bit closer to see if we can try to capture a little bit more of that action. But this does appear that they're now going to start turning these vehicles around rather than waiting for the bridge to clear going north. Uh, that, uh, that bus that we were showing you earlier, that bus has now turned around and you can see even in the time that uh, we have been here that the number of vehicles has thinned considerably. So uh, it looks like uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure if he's CHP or if he's with Bridge Authority, uh, but is uh, somebody uh, directing traffic and starting to turn some of these vehicles around. Someone in an official capacity is directing traffic, and so he's directing people to go uh, essentially the wrong way to get out of that uh, place where they've been stuck on Doyle Drive. That's, I guess, Christian, that's a sign that we shouldn't expect the, Bay, the Golden Gate Bridge, rather, to open anytime soon, <laughs> if this is their plan B that they're yeah, now. Yeah, exactly right. That's a that's a good read. This this uh, this gentleman in the fluorescent jacket is uh, asking people if they want to stay here on the bridge approach. If they want to stay here, he's letting them stay, but he's also allowing people to turn around. This is one of the complaints that we'd heard from a couple of the people who were out here earlier. Um, they'd said, "Hey, I wish they would just turn us around and let us go because I don't want to be stuck here." We talked to some people who've been stuck here for hours, and they said, "I wish they would just turn us around and let us go." Uh, we're going to see if there's a possibility. Uh, sir, don't know if you feel comfortable. We'd love to talk to you just about what you've been through this morning. Do you have 30 seconds to talk with us? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, 
What's your story? How, how long have you been out here and were you trying to drive? I've been watching you live right now on my phone. <laughs> Christian, how you doing? Yeah. Good to see you. I wish I right, was under thanks. better circumstances. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation, a sensitive situation, as we all know. I've, I've been here since 8 o'clock, so stuck with everyone else here. It's unfortunate, but uh, not much else uh, we can do. Yeah, so you just have an alternate route to get home, so I do have an escape, uh, but I think I'll just wait it out for now. And you're trying to make your way home, so that's one of the yeah. reasons why I heard the, the guy from the Presidio Trust saying, hey, do you want to stay here or do you want to turn around? For you, turning around doesn't make sense because you need to get home. Well, it does. I could always take the Richmond San Rafael. Uh, it's, it's an alternate route, I can't say. So I'm glad they are giving us the option of turning around and getting out of here. That is good. I've seen also that they have a Highway 880 cleared already, and they had more protesters over there. So. From what I've seen from your guys' footage and the helicopter, it looks like there's only about maybe a dozen protesters, if that, and there's just a standoff. So hopefully uh, it just gets resolved, you know. Let's hope so. I'm going to wish you good luck. What's hey, your name? Thank you. Nick. Nick? What's your last name, Nick? Uh, you prefer not to say? Yeah. Nick, you got it, man. Right. Thank you again for yeah. talking with right, us. Good luck guys. and be safe, okay? I right, appreciate you. So there you go. Uh, Nick telling us he's been here since uh, 8 o'clock, uh, stuck here. And like you've heard, some of the folks stuck going north. He needs to make his way home. It doesn't necessarily make sense for him to turn around. Right. Uh, we talked again to that home health care worker who said that she was trying to get over to Tiburon because she needed to get over there to see a patient. So a lot of a lot of stories like that going on out here, guys. Well, he is the definition of taking it in stride. He certainly yeah. is. <laughs> wow. We all have the patience of that gentleman. Yeah. It was good to hear from him directly. Christian Kafton, thank you so much. Christian's been there at the Golden Gate Bridge. The situation at the Golden Gate Bridge is kind of the third of three that popped up this morning, but even that's been ongoing for a at least a couple of hours now. Live pictures up above here. If we can swing back to uh, kind of the starting place, which is 880 in Oakland. Our Amanda Quintana has been there since the 6 o'clock hour. So, Amanda, five plus hours now you've been at the scene. You've been able to talk to more people where you are. Bring us that part of the story. Yeah, so still very slow moving here. There's only one lane open, that same lane that has been open. But um, I remember Andre asked earlier, he asked what, what's happening to the protesters once they are removed from the big oil barrels and the chains are removed. Well, we thought that they had left. We thought they were put in a van, but it seems like they are standing um, right at the edge of the freeway there. You could see uh, one of the protesters in that red kind of sweatshirt with the scarf. Um, we've kind of been watching. There's two other protesters that have been removed from those barrels, and they're sitting. Um, so it's hard to see them, but they're sitting there as well. And uh, so the, these people have not been arrested. They're not in handcuffs. You can see this person has one of their arms up. They're not in handcuffs. Uh, so we are watching as they work on the fourth protester now, and it's kind of the same situation, you know. Uh, police are getting used to this. They're used to kind of bringing in the saw first to get through one piece and then the jackhammer to get through the concrete. And, you know, it's this thing that they've already done three times. So now they're working on the fourth protester that is sitting there. And we're starting to see more people uh, kind of congregate along the side of the freeway here to either support or just to kind of see what's happening and take photos. Uh, so I did talk to a man that saw that this was happening on social media and then came to bring the Palestinian flag and hang it here on the side of the freeway. Let's hear from him. Well, there's a genocide going on halfway across the world and people have to be informed about it. Whether it's going to work, whether it's on social media, people need to stay informed of what's going on. Babies are dying. So it looks like they are still working on that fourth person. Uh, they might be moving those three protesters that have already uh, been removed from those barrels. But again, it, we've been here a long time and a lot of the people that were sitting in their car for almost three hours had been there for a long time. But people are able to move through in that one lane right now. Um, I spoke to a woman that, uh, you know, was sitting there for a little while and she said as she drove by, she was kind of confused about what was happening. You don't you don't see signs from the protesters. You don't see much. So uh, she had kind of come over here to the side to ask us and to get some more information about what actually caused the backup. Uh, so it is still hard to see that this is a protest from the side or even if you're driving right by them. Again, this will stay here for a while because they've only gotten three of the six protesters out so far. I'll send it back to you in the studio.
Thank you so much for that report. Uh, we did get an update uh, from uh, the Port of Oakland because obviously that this is meant to affect that. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, they say it's too early to tell what the economic impacts uh, might be. Uh, they do say their marine terminals have closed for the day and the situation is dynamic and it is evolving. That coming from a representative from the Port of Oakland when we contacted them to see how the situation is unfolding there uh, since that is one of the intended targets, obviously, of this economic blockade uh, being brought by this uh, A-15 group that, that, that's part of this here. And we also saw in Tom Baker's live shot, there was a, a crowd there earlier. It had been thinning, so let's check in with Tom now. Uh, where that third protest over on 7th Avenue and 880 uh, popped up a short time ago. Tom, take it away. Well, it's uh, smaller than it was before, but uh, the fact is a lot of people are up on the freeway. So basically what's happening is some people come down, some people go up, but it is a little bit smaller than it was. Now, I have with me Bill Abudi, who is the president of AB Trucking, one of the trucking companies at the port. He's been there for a long, long time. And, Bill, my first question to you is, inside of the port because your your facility is inside the port what's the situation exactly um, all the terminals decided to go ahead and honor the uh, the protest and they closed down and so we encouraged them to do that and they followed up with it what does that mean in practical terms of the movement of goods uh, everything is dead stop right now the only thing that's moving is truckers that have containers in their yard and they're making their final deliveries but uh, 99 percent of the traffic inside the port is dead stop now the other thing you raised a really interesting point is that there's a lot of support for what's going on here give me a sense of who the truckers are and why that's so important well, we have 32 different languages spoken here at the port, so it's all minorities, immigrants, uh, that uh, support the Palestinian cause and they want this to stop. Um, behind us, you see a lot of them are white, probably Jewish, that are supporting this also. So there's massive support for the stopping of the war uh, in Gaza, in the West Bank, and Iran now. Given the fact that the port is somewhat of a political hot you know, a hot plug for just about anything. Is it something that the port just has to absorb into the daily business of what it does, or is it something that really is disruptive, or is this a, a single day like this just something you learn to uh, expect and uh, deal with? Well, over the years, I've been here for 35 years, it happens every once in a while, and for a good cause, uh, just like South Af Africa's apartheid, that was a great cause, it changed things. That's what these people are trying to do. That's what we support. And if we have to take one day pay cut, so be it. Uh, there's a lot of people getting killed. And that's the focus needs to be away from blocking the freeway, disrupting the economy, even though that's happening. But think of the human beings that are being killed every single day because we will not sit down at the negotiating table and resolve it politically. Well, and, it, and it clearly sounds like, obviously, you have strong feelings about this because your family's uh, from, uh, you know, your, your long-term family's from overseas. I'm a first-generation immigrant. I am a Palestinian-American. Um, I've served here in the military, so I'm on both sides. Uh, but definitely the right thing needs to happen, and uh, we need to stop this war. Well, that's Bill Abudi, the president of AB Trucking, uh, a big trucking firm that uh, we rely on for information all the time on all the issues that go on at the port. And that is the situation here where, again, uh, it's slower and less, uh, uh, you know, less voluminous than it was before. But the fact is a lot of the folks that were on that line are now up on that freeway. And because they're up on that freeway, that freeway remains shut down because even if they were to open this up, uh, they wouldn't get anywhere very far because the police would stop it. That's the situation. And also interesting to point out that right now, there is not a police car around here. This thing has gone so well that nobody's really getting serious about trying to do anything about removing them because at this point in time, there's not real confrontation going on. That is the situation from uh, the 7th Street uh, uh, entrance to uh, 880 South, and we'll go back to you now. Yeah, Tom, uh, he, he provides an interesting perspective here as, as a first-generation immigrant. Um, we live in, a, in an area that is very dynamic, right? People from all different cultures and nations have settled here uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, so it, it, it's more complex than one side or the other, isn't it? And, and I, it sounds like that man really exemplifies 
the complexity of what is happening before us, these protests, people that might not agree with right. them because they're blocking traffic. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I mean, when you see the kind of uh, spread of people that are against what's going on, it's a situation that just has to get settled because this is just a slaughter now. And uh, and it's a slaughter, you know, that began it. It's a slaughter that's going on now. And one of the things that happens is that you do really get people concerned. And, uh, you know, obviously both uh, the uh, folks here locally, but all folks across the country and certainly government is starting to understand this and pushing for the settlement, which is the best thing to do because that stops the killing. And once you stop the killing, you can start real talking. Uh, but obviously, uh, right now, the Port of Oakland things are uh, setting at zero because there's just no container movement whatsoever. Back to you. All right, let's bring things back to where you are real quick before we jump over to Amanda at 880. The couple of police cars that we saw in your life picture just off to the side, they're no longer there. And and it sounds like the people who no left longer. that protest line left of their own accord. Absolutely. Uh, so a number of people, as we were coming over here, but a number of people have walked away and they walk up towards uh, the West Oakland Barton where the big post office is and there are some places to eat and things like that there. But that's really heading towards downtown Oakland and uh, nobody's going this way because this is just more into the port. Uh, but kind of through the port more than anything else. So that's the situation. And um, because of that, uh, what we see is uh, a relatively smaller number of people. As I said, it, when we started here, there were 30 people and 20 bikes. There are probably 20 bikes still, but there aren't 30 people there. And the reason for that is, is that some, uh, some people went up on the freeway, other people walked away. And again, uh, because it was mentioned earlier that this is a coalition of groups, it's not one solid group on one solid issue. They are all in support of a general issue of pe peace in Palestine, but uh, they have different agendas and all that, and you would expect people at some point in time to say, I've done my bit and I'm going. So that's a situation for sure. Other than that, we will stand by, see what's going on. We'll be back uh, for the new news, and then uh, we'll see how long this lasts. Otherwise, we'll move on to other things. Back to you. Okay, we are, of course, clearly extending our coverage well past mornings on two to bring you this continuing developing what used to be breaking news here, but it's still very much the case. People in Oakland have been stuck on 880 for hours here as protesters have blocked off most lanes in the northbound direction. We do see some traffic getting through. Uh, if you work maybe several miles south of where that live picture is, Amanda Quintana has been sort of at the heat of where it's all been happening. Uh, share with us the location, uh, what's happening where you are, and an update. Right, so this is just before the Embarcadero exit that these protesters are still there. Uh, there are three protesters that are still on the freeway, uh, still attached to those barrels. And if, if you're just joining us, they've been attached, uh, you know, right arm in one barrel, left arm in one barrel. These large oil barrels uh, that seem to be filled with some kind of concrete or something uh, that is requiring a jackhammer from police to get through. So we've been watching, you know, uh, this these layers that police have to get through. They'll come in with the saw first. Um, you'll kind of see sparks. Uh, they'll come in with the jackhammer next. Uh, this whole time using kind of a tarp or uh, like a blanket to cover the face of the protesters so that they're not getting hit by these sparks. Uh, again, three people have been taken out of those barrels. They've been removed. Uh, we thought that they were taken away from the scene, but it seems like uh, police have them in one area that they're just standing or sitting over there. Um, but they're not, they haven't been arrested. They're not in handcuffs that we can see from this side. Um, and one lane, the very left lane, is open. So cars are able to get through on that left lane. Uh, but there are, I heard Andre mentioning this earlier, a lot of semi trucks on 880. So it is just taking a really long time for all of these cars to get through, to all merge over onto that left lane and get through. Um, and then more people are just kind of gathering on the side here of the freeway to see what's happening, either, you know, coming to support. Uh, coming to just, you know, kind of be nosy and see what's going on. Uh, but those people, three protesters are still there. They are still sitting down um, and police are working. You can see it's a it's a pretty large group of police that it takes to get through all these layers um, to finally free the arms of those protesters and be able to remove them from the freeway. 
Amanda, so it's still just one lane of traffic in that northbound direction that's getting through uh, that where the law enforcement officers are with the sawing out the, the, the protesters who remain at the scene? Right, so just that left lane, that one lane, um, and then a little bit before this, there's a uh, Caltrans sign that I believe is just telling people all to merge to that left lane so that that one lane can get through. Well, we, thank you, Amanda, for that report. We do ha have seen uh, the traffic impact in that area, at least, kind of lighten up a little bit, and you can see it uh, from our traffic maps and also from our cameras looking over at 880. Uh, if we could take the map right now that I have pulled up, uh, you can, we can show you what this looks like. Well, actually, we have a live picture of 880 instead of the map, and you can see traffic six miles away from where this protest started uh, has now uh, cleared. But there's still a, an impact there, not just there, but also uh, if you look at uh, the other direction of 880, southbound 880 at 7th Street, that's where Tom Vakar was reporting on the protest that had blocked uh, the off-ramp in that direction, the freeway entrance in that direction. There's a crash right behind it. So this has had these, when you close one lane, one off-ramp, close a major thoroughfare, it tends to have a ripple effect uh, in other parts of the commute. Let's go over to uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, which is still shut down in both directions, as you can see here. Uh, the, uh, this is because of another protest test that started just before eight o'clock this morning. Uh a coalition, as Andre has been explaining, representing uh, different groups that have come together to uh, pick today, April 15th, to make a statement in protest of the Israel-Hamas war. This is a live picture of the Golden Gate Bridge, where you see uh, that traffic back up in the northbound direction behind the protest that happened uh, that started just before 8 o'clock this morning. Now, earlier, just in the last half hour or so, the last time we saw a picture of uh, the uh, law enforcement officers police and the protesters. We saw a lot more police than protesters. We have also seen some people who appeared to be part of this demonstration being led away with their hands behind their back. So it appears the protest is over, but for some reason, we do not know why yet. The Golden Gate Bridge remains closed, and this is the traffic backup that goes all the way into, well into Marin County. It has been like this since before 8 o'clock this morning. A short time ago, we checked in with Christian Kaftan, who was on uh, the uh, just south of the of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge toll plaza on Doyle Drive, showing us the traffic sort of turning around there. But traffic nor pedestrians are allowed onto the Golden Gate Bridge in either direction uh, because of the protests that happened there earlier. Again, the last live picture we saw showing us the point where this protest happened. Uh, you couldn't see any banners or any signs or even anyone who appeared to be a protester still there. It, uh, Christian had mentioned that there was uh, some sort of bus that had maybe taken some of the people arrested, uh, at least if not away from the scene, at least put them in, police had put them in that bus at the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge. But we don't know why there doesn't appear to be any movement of uh, reopening uh, part of the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, I recall the last time we uh, covered something similar to this, where there was a protest on the Bay Bridge during the Apex Summit, Andre. Yeah. I remember during that time, mm -hmm. part of the challenge in reopening the bridge was that during that protest, the protesters had driven their cars yeah. onto the bridge, the middle of the bridge, stopped, got out, threw their keys in the bay yep. so that they couldn't move their cars. Yeah. And I wonder, was, we don't know, but I wonder if that's a similar situation yeah, because, we're seeing here. Because we, we only see a small group of people, right? I mean, unlike what we saw that day, um, there's only been a small group of people holding up banners here. Uh, and again, on 880, there were only, I guess, seven people at some point. Uh, there are probably larger protests down by the, the port entrance there off of 880 and 7th. Uh, so it is curious to know why it would be taking so long but if we think back to the history of how these things have been unfolding that might be one way now the other protests that took place on the bridge on february 14th uh i i, I, I seem to remember that there were some vehicles parked but 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 chp intercepted that right away i mean it happened a couple months after what happened in november and mm -hmm. they just so, weren't seem to taking any chances they were ready for it essentially and and got those folks right off of the bridge but it is curious to 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 
as we try to figure out what is happening here, we use the history of what's happened here, even over the last few months to kind of understand why perhaps it's taking so long. And CHP has said that they are offering no timeline yet of when uh, the Golden Gate Bridge uh, will reopen to traffic in either uh, direction here. Uh, we know that it's the direction heading um, from Marin into San Francisco that's heavily affected here. But uh, again, traffic in both directions have been stopped as a result of this. And as you look at the toll plaza at uh, 1133 uh, in the uh, midday and there's absolutely nothing happening, which is really strange because you have cars here, you have the big red buses with tourists that come here. So that's going to be affected as well. A lot of people that come to visit here from all over the world. This is the site that they want to go see. So you got to imagine that's having a, a, an impact on the uh, companies that, that run those tour buses that come in from maybe Union Square to take people there. I mean, I've taken family members that come to town uh, on the red buses, on the double deckers to go visit this area. That's not going to be happening for now. Uh, and it's not clear yet when any this, that's going to be happening. And on top of that, the people who work uh, in San Francisco or Marin County cannot get to work at this point. And, and forget it if you're on the bridge. The, the folks where Christian was standing um, on, the, uh, on the southern side of the bridge, they were able to at least turn around. The folks here are not going to be able to. Everyone's crammed on, onto the bridge here. Uh, and, there, and CHP's not giving us uh, any indication of what is happening on the ground. Obviously, the situation is developing, so there's not much they can provide to us at this point. We can only watch and, 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 and see what's happening here. Uh, two people in, in uh, those bright red... Uh, bright uh, green vests were taken into custody just a short time ago uh, by CHP officers. Uh, there are many of them on the scene. Still no clue, though, why it's taking so long or why they have not moved in. Uh, I can tell you, though, that these, this organization, this group, the A15 group that organized all of this, uh, they made this mutual pact that said they will keep each other safe by not talking to police, not coordinating with police, and not talking to them about our actions are our fellow organizers. So they're really keeping tight-lipped about this, as opposed to what we saw a few weeks ago when there were uh, pro-Palestinian demonstrators at, at SFO, and that happened in the international terminal. Uh, if you remember that one, they did coordinate with the airport and told the airport exactly what they were doing. That's not unusual to do that. And the airport let them uh, do their protest in front of, uh, I think it was, I forget which terminal it was, uh, but they let them uh, do their protest. Uh, things were rerouted, uh, uh, passengers were rerouted to different gates to get to their planes at the time. Uh, and so that is not so unusual. But in this particular case, this A15 action uh, coalition here, they had vowed not to work with police on any of this. And, and we could see right here that it hasn't been. They are just going for the long haul, bringing as much attention to their, their pro-Palestinian cause. Uh, you heard Tom Baker talk about people are pushing for something to happen to the people of Palestine because they're caught in the middle of this war between Israel and Hamas right now. And you can see the displacement, you can see the death, all the result of the, uh, the, the Hamas attack on October 7th. But, but that is what the starting point to this was. But there is also frustration about what will happen to the Palestinian people in the future. And that is where uh, these uh, demonstrations are coming from. Uh, so that is the message from this. Of course, if you're stuck in this traffic, whether you're, you're for one side or the other, it doesn't matter. You have to get to work or you can't go home. You have a family member that you need to get to. Uh, that's not going to happen right now. Uh, let's say things back to, uh, back to the Golden Gate Bridge. That is the big scene that we're watching right now. Christian Kafton back there live uh, right now with more on what he can tell us. Uh, Christian, it looks like you moved a little bit onto the bridge. Yeah, we've moved up closer to the bridge and a lot of developments really in just the last four or five minutes. Let's give you a live look right now so you can see that the bridge is in fact still closed down at this location. Uh, no traffic in either directions, but in the last five to ten minutes we saw a, a Golden Gate Transit bus uh, that had been backed up. I told you about that bus in our earlier report at around uh, 11 o'clock that a bus had been uh, pulled up onto the road deck to uh, take custody of the protesters who were up there. We just saw that bus uh, roll down southwards into San Francisco with a CHP escort. You can see that uh, there are still uh, a number of people here at the pedestrian access to the Gold Gate Bridge. So at this time they have not reopened pedestrian access or vehicle access on the bridge, although it seems that uh, they loaded at least one bus load of uh, protesters. We're not sure uh, if they're under arrest, in custody, what the exact designation is for those people at this point. Uh, we did have a chance to talk with a spokesperson for uh, the protest who was over here who talked about the day of protest, and they'd said that really it's working exactly as designed. He told me uh, that the, the, the purpose was to uh, uh, 
bring commerce to a halt. So that's one of the reasons why they targeted uh, specific areas. They targeted uh, specific uh, paths that they knew would uh, cause uh, difficulty and, and snarl traffic and block commerce. They say it's part of their message because uh, they are trying to say there should not be business as normal uh, where the administration uh, supports Israel. Uh, so they have said that they want to make sure that they get their message out loud and clear. Uh, when I asked uh, what they made of the possibility they could be inconveniencing people or in the case of that home health care worker that we talked to earlier, um, potentially putting somebody uh, in a medical jeopardy. They'd said that there are people in uh, Gaza who are uh, uh, facing medical emergencies as well. They say they don't want to uh, endanger anybody, but they need to make sure that this is a pressing issue and it's on the forefront uh, of people's minds. Uh, when also asked about whether they were worried that this could have a backlash, in other words, people perhaps sympathizing with uh, their sentiments but not liking their methodology, uh, they'd said that uh, this is a proven method for uh, social change. They said that this has worked uh, for civil rights. They said that this worked to help end the war in Vietnam. They said there's precedent for this type of action, and they're hoping to take the same kind of precedent now. Uh, and try to move the administration's uh, position uh, when it comes to uh, supporting Israel. Uh, again, the latest development here is that we did see uh, one busload of people coming off of the bridge, uh, the deck of the bridge. You can see, though, that at this point there is still no vehicle traffic going either northbound or southbound on the bridge. Uh, as we swing all the way around, Joseph doing a very nice job of coming all the way around to show you that uh, approach north to the bridge. That's the Doyle Drive approach going towards the bridge. You can still see that it is blocked. Uh, relatively few vehicles in that direction now. We'd shown you about uh, oh, 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, uh, that they were starting to turn some of those vehicles around. There are just a few vehicles that are still pointed in the northbound direction. The uh, authority there, the 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 a uh, gentleman who was directing traffic gave people the option to either turn around and head south in the northbound lanes to get off of Doyle Drive or to remain there so that they could continue on north if they wanted to. Some people choosing to uh, remain uh, in the northbound direction. Uh, we're going to do one more big swing and give you one more last look at the Golden Gate. Uh, as we come around, um, we don't know at this point from our vantage point. I can't see if there are still uh, protesters up in that area. We don't know if uh, CHP or the Golden Gate Bridge Authority is working to clear that area as we speak. I don't have the ability to see our chopper video right now, so we I don't know exactly what's going on in that area, but we did, again, see that at least one bus load uh, left. There appeared to be Multiple people on board that bus. Presumably, again, those are some of the protesters who were here blocking access to the bridge uh, earlier this morning. All the Christian, all the people we see, the, the bicyclists, the people walking their dogs who were stopped right where you are. Are they people who didn't know about what was happening and kind of came upon a surprise scene, or might they be there to, you know, get a much closer in-person look at what's going on? Well, so it's a combination. Some people presumably knew what was going on. We did talk to uh, at least one person who'd seen the media coverage and wanted to come out and take a look for himself. So again, it's going to be a mixed bag. And then there was also uh, uh, some of them have left, but there's a substantial media presence here as well, because this is our vantage point. Uh, so we can sort of see from here. So there's a, uh, a kind of a hodgepodge, if you will, of people who are here, some of whom uh, perhaps uh, unaware that this protest was underway and simply got caught here and are waiting to see how it turns out. Others coming here specifically to look. Um, there aren't that many people here. I'd say maybe uh, two dozen or so people in the general vicinity um, who are here. And, and remember, the the footpath across the bridge really is uh, uh, a, a lot of visitors take that. A lot of tourists like to go and take a look at uh, the, the bridge that way. A lot of cyclists, of course, cycle mm -hmm. from San Francisco to Marin County and use the bridge as a way of uh, of getting from north to south because the view is uh, obviously absolutely spectacular. Uh, so again, more than likely kind of a mixed bag. Some people who didn't know what they were walking into, some people who wanted to check it out for themselves. Yeah. Something I just noticed, and Christian, you said, as you mentioned, you can't see the aerial coverage. So you, you, 
this is might be new to you, but something I'm noticing in that uh, picture from our chopper on the right hand of the screen, uh, the backup, the traffic backup had earlier extended well beyond into Marin County, and it looks like now it ends at the span. So I wonder if, like you showed us, Christian, on the south end of the Golden Gate Bridge, they had turned traffic around and allowed it to go in the wrong direction to get off the approach to the Golden Gate Bridge. I wonder if they did something similar on the northern end of the Golden Gate Bridge as well. That's something, one of many things, many, many questions we will have to uh, continue asking the CHP and uh, the Presidio Trust and people at the Golden Gate Bridge uh, to get some answers about what the situation is there in the middle of the span, which continues to be blocked off, traffic not moving in that uh, southbound direction, even though uh, it appears that the protesters have, uh, the protest has been uh, resolved and the protesters have been uh, moved away by bus, presumably after having been detained for being involved in that protest. We still aren't seeing any any indication that they're opening the Golden Gate Bridge uh, at all, which is uh, an interesting development at this point. We are still also following what's going on uh, at uh, third, a third protest that had traffic stopped at 880 in West Oakland. That's where Tom Vakar is, uh, keeping an eye on the situation there. And I know and when we last checked in with Tom, he mentioned that it seemed like things were sort of resolving at uh, that protest as well, because as the morning's gone on, we've seen fewer and fewer people at uh, that demonstration, Tom. Is that still the case? Yeah, basically there are about 15 people out there right now, but there are about 20 bikes. So where are the other people? They're up on the freeway. This appears to be the main ingress and egress for the protesters who are up there blocking uh, 880 South. And uh, the reason that these people are staying here is because they have, uh, you know, they have their colleagues up there they're actually up on the freeway, so they've got to make sure that nobody tries to get on the freeway because then there could be some sort of confrontation or something crazy happen. So that's what's going on here. But the reality of the situation is, is that uh, the bikes are there because the people are not because they're up there. Now, I also noticed that within the last uh, half hour or so, uh, some Palestinian flags have been uh, dispersed uh, to uh, a couple of the people here, so they're showing those. And the other thing we noticed was that just a little while ago, a vehicle stopped by uh, at the corner over there where the sign is, and they dropped off food and drink for the folks that are here and ostensibly up there on the freeway so that they stay hydrated and so that they can have something to eat while they're doing this. So it looks like they're settling in for a longer haul and uh, because of that, uh, we have to stay here and just find out what's going on. Now, I can tell you that uh, a lady recently was here and she had a drone and she put it up and she showed us just how many protesters are up there. And I'm sure you've seen that from helicopter shots. But the point of all of this is that this is a well-planned thing and it is planned in such a way that until those folks get off the freeway one way or the other, these folks are going nowhere. And uh, so that part of uh, the 880 is still closed off. And that means if you look up here on the left, you will see uh, vehicles up there that are just simply not moving uh, on the freeway because there's no way for them to move because not very far in front of them are a bunch of folks and then some uh, uh, law enforcement cars up there that uh, are taking up the space in those lanes. That is the situation here right now. And as I say, uh, not many people uh, down here, but enough uh, and enough bicycles to keep folks uh, to understand that this is not a place that they need to be turning um, unless somebody does something uh, really untoward. And I really don't expect that because uh, people here have been very, very well behaved. Back to you. And again, because you're kind of down on the street there, we've seen a couple OPD vehicles. Still no sign of the highway patrol where you are. No, in fact, uh, uh, there's uh, no law enforcement here whatsoever right now. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of law enforcement around here. There's, you know, the county sheriff, there's uh, Oakland, there's the Port Authority people, there's the, you know, customs and all that. So there's a lot of law enforcement here, but nobody down here, uh, you know, doing any provocative things or anything like that. In fact, they're not even here. And I think that that's because they believe that there's something likely 
less likely to happen if they're not here than if they are here. And uh, as I say, the numbers are dwindling now. Some of them are up on the freeway, but the numbers down here on the street are actually dwindling. And there aren't the number of people that were across the street to kind of provide additional support. It's kind of uh, these folks and the folks up on the freeway. Uh, that is the situation. All right, Tom Baker, I'm talking to us live there. We've seen the, the situation unfold. I'm going to lean on Ali Rasmus. You've been, <laughs> you've been on the job since 4 a.m. Tom, thank you. So the, in order uh, of when these protests started, I think the, the first word that we got was uh, on 880 in Oakland, the northbound lanes, uh, not far from Jack London Square. That popped up first, and then it was the Golden Gate Bridge protest, and then where Tom is. Yes, okay. I, I believe that was the timeline. And, it, you know, these were planned to happen during the height of the morning commute. Uh, we mentioned northbound 880. That is a, a major thoroughfare. It's even on a good day, there's always traffic backups mm -hmm. during the 6 o'clock hour. So, of course, when you shut down the northbound lanes entirely, uh, that had just a tremendous ripple effect, not just on 880, but also 580 and even Highway 24, all the ways that you could get from uh, Dublin, Pleasanton, Tri-Valley, uh, Hayward to the Bay Bridge toll plaza, every single uh, freeway going that direction was backed up because northbound 880 was closed. And it took, uh, that was more than five hours ago, and they still are in the process of removing some of the protesters at northbound 880. Mm -hmm. Now we have the situation at the Golden Gate Bridge. This started just before 8 o'clock, because I remember looking at the traffic maps and seeing a little red blip of uh, some sort of backup in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge right before 8 o'clock, which is unusual because we usually don't have backups during even during the morning commute on the Golden Gate Bridge anymore. It just doesn't have the volume of traffic uh, now that it used to even, you know, five years ago. So, uh, but you can see a terrible traffic backup here now on the Golden Gate Bridge in that southbound direction uh, in particular because of the protests that happened there just before 8 o'clock this morning. Now from some of our aerial pictures that we've been sort of monitoring and able to see what's been transpiring, uh, we don't have an ability to get into the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge right now to see what is and talk to people about what is going on there because, as you saw, Christian Kaftan and others are being aren't even allowed to walk onto the Golden Gate Bridge because not only uh, is are the traffic lanes in the north and southbound direction uh, shut down entirely, but the pedestrian walkways are as well. So. All we're able to gather about what's happening here at the Golden Gate Bridge is what we're able to see, aside from, you know, a few sparse, frankly, updates that we've gotten mm -hmm. from the CHP and the Golden Gate Bridge Authority about some arrests being made of protesters on the Golden Gate Bridge. And then Christian noted that uh, some of the protesters were arrested and put onto a bus, but we still don't know why the there's been no movement here in the southbound direction of the Golden Gate Bridge with no cars going through. So some of the people you're looking at uh, in their cars in this shot here have been stuck in their vehicles since before uh, seven before eight o'clock this morning, and so we're still working to figure out what is the delay in getting uh, that bridge reopened. Four hours for them, yeah. six hours for those people who were stuck immediately behind the protesters on Interstate 880 northbound in Oakland. If we can swing back to that uh, picture and situation, our Amanda Quintana has been there. You arrived there right around the six o'clock hour, Amanda. Um, that is the first major protest to have bubbled up here in the Bay Area. It is ongoing. Things have eased just a bit. We see a couple people. Uh, might they be detained? Are, there, are they holding their hands behind their backs voluntarily or, or, or might they be zip tied, Amanda? What, what information do you have? So it looks like these people are detained. At least three people, the last three people that had been uh, protesting, you know, attached to those barrels. It looks like they have their hands zip tied behind their back, which is interesting because the first few protesters that were removed from the barrels were not uh, zip tied, you know, with their hands behind their back. They were simply standing there. One of them had their uh, fist up. Uh, so it, it's interesting to see some of them do um, are being detained. Uh, those look like the final three protesters 
Um, it looks like Caltrans, there's a worker there that's uh, kind of sweeping the road. So it looks like they might be cleaning up and they just opened a second lane. So now two lanes are open. Uh, you can see them kind of sweeping up. Uh, I'm sure the, the remnants of all the work that they've been doing this morning because they had to use saws and jackhammers and all of these things to get through those barrels that the protesters were attached to um, to then get them up and out of the area. So it looks like there is a lot of movement that's happened just in the last couple minutes here. A second lane open. The three remaining protesters have been removed, um, and it looks like uh, detained, uh, arrested. We're, we're waiting to kind of see what happens with them next because that just happened uh, in the last few minutes. Uh, so it looks like two lanes, possibly another lane might open up soon, but uh, that's some good news if you're headed on 880 northbound uh, in this area. So I'll send it back to you guys and we'll continue to watch and, and see if there's any updates here that I can give you guys. Okay. And again, looks like more looking loser popping up where you are as well, Amanda. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, uh, you know, people are curious. Um, like I've been saying, it's kind of hard to tell right. that this is a protest. All morning, it's been hard to tell because the protesters were sitting down and they've been blocked by the median and you, and you couldn't really tell what was going on. So a lot of people uh, have been coming just to kind of figure out what's going on. They're curious. Uh, some people, you know, coming, bringing Palestinian flags uh, just, just to show their support. So lots of people just along the side here taking pictures, trying to see what's going on. Amanda Quintana reporting for us live in Oakland this afternoon. Amanda, thank you so much. The situation there going on since uh, uh, at 6.30 this morning is when the issue on 880 uh, started here. And it's not completely um, finished up just yet, but at least it's making some progress, at least if you are a driver in that area and we're stuck in all this traffic. But we can see the residual effects from our camera mounted onto the roof of our building here in Jack London Square. Uh, and this is the traffic heading uh, north uh, toward downtown Oakland that you see is backed up here. You can see the, 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 the vehicles backed up the other side flowing smoothly. It's been that way all, all morning long and uh, there doesn't seem to be any real issues there. But uh, as Amanda said, there's still some people sitting there taking part in the protests that uh, CHP is trying to free from uh, how they're uh, bound themselves uh, to that area trying to prevent traffic from flowing smoothly along 880. Right and now. this is really a day of action across the country. I was just reading up a little bit on protesters who were blocking the main route to Chicago's O'Hare Airport. Um, so again, this is, you know, we have three kind of hot spots here in the Bay Area, the one in Chicago and a few other across the country. So when you talk about a, a coordinated plan, this is not sort of the organic, hey, I'm upset, let's go do something. Nope. This is more of a, all right, on this day, we are going to do something. What groups are with me? So, um, you know, I know that these groups have legal counsel. So they have people who are actually on the ground. We have, you know, th they have people who come and help them, you know, in terms of dropping mm -hmm. off food and water if these things go on for many, many hours. So it's interesting to watch, really interesting to watch if you think back to how protests were, you know, let's say almost 20 years ago, at least when I got here to KTVU. Yeah. Um, it was really rare to see this sort of coordination um, and something that popped up maybe 10 years ago is, of course, everyone has a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Everything's being documented. And when I say everyone, you know, certainly police officers are documenting with their body-worn cameras, uh, protesters have their, you know, cameras and, and video gear, et cetera. And then, of course, you have Looky Loose holding cell phones up, sometimes live streaming the event. So there's yeah. a lot of eyes on a relatively small group of people who are causing a huge disruption to, to the greater Bay Area. Yeah, and these protests are getting more organized, bigger. The last major one, of course, uh, we, we, we mentioned several times here throughout the morning was, was the one on the uh, Bay Bridge. But there have been several smaller protests, too. The one at SFO, uh, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier this morning, in which they actually get Give us a full heads up uh, that they were going to be taking part uh, in a protest at the airport, disrupting um, uh, one of the terminals inside the international terminal, one of the areas where um, you know, passengers walk through to TSA checkpoint. Uh, and that lasted a certain amount of time. And then the protesters were were, were ushered out of, of the building. Uh, but in this case, it's completely different. They did not want anyone who was going to be participating in this A-15 action uh, to to coordinate at all uh, with police. Uh, they did not want uh, police to know what they were doing. They wanted to uh, to create this this economic blockade uh, affecting key routes. Uh, as Gossi mentioned, we have uh, one near Chicago here airport and we have two major uh, choke points here, you know, Golden Gate Bridge getting uh, from Marin to San Francisco and of course 880, which, you know, 
travels you right by the uh, Port of Oakland, a major economic driver. And we understand that um, over 90% of the business, uh, of the traffic inside the port has really come to a standstill, according to uh, the owner of a trucking company that Tom Vagar spoke to just a short time ago live on air here. Uh, he told us that uh, a lot of the people that work uh, at the Port of Oakland, uh, some uh, minorities, some of Palestinian descent, some of, of, of uh, Israeli descent, Jewish descent, uh, are supporting the protests. Uh, that's not the case with everyone, though. Uh, not everyone is supporting the demonstrations, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, but the key here is, uh, is they're trying to get the message across, and we differentiate what's happening here. So they are pro-Palestinian protesters who are protesting the war in Gaza, and they are pushing for some sort of solution in which um, Israel would cease its um, attacks uh, on Hamas because it is affecting, and we've all seen it's affecting the people uh, that live uh, in the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. And that is the main issue. That is what they want uh, to see stopped here. And, of course, you have the folks on the other side who say Israel has a right to defend itself. So no matter what side you're on here, the people of Palestine are still caught in the middle of this with the number of dead numbering in the tens of thousands of people and uh, that has prompted uh, demonstrations like what you see here like the ones we've seen over the past several months here in the Bay Area and across different parts of the country as well. It's so interesting to watch how the sentiment changes and again if we could fast forward to let's say four o'clock today there will likely be a public discussion about the reason behind the closures here on the Golden Gate Bridge and on 880 in Oakland as we've heard from Christian Kaftan as we've heard from other reporters every time we cover something like this. The immediate reaction from drivers who were caught in these protests is I need to get to where I'm going. Yeah. Christian Captain spoke with a woman mm -hmm. who works as a home health aide. She said, I have somebody up in Tiburon who relies on me for his well-being. I can't get to him. So, you know, the immediate concern is I need to get to where I'm going. And if, you know, if, if, if you really want to ride, go to social media, type in Golden Gate Bridge, and you will see all sorts of reaction, frankly, mm -hmm. most of them negative, yep. asking why are people even being allowed to protest this way and allowed to tie up traffic on the Golden Gate Bridge or tie up traffic on Interstate 880 in the heart of Oakland in the middle of the morning commute on a Monday. Many people wondering why law enforcement isn't taking more action, acting more swiftly to remove the protesters and to clear the roadway. Those are questions for another time as right now the situation is very much ongoing. We'll keep covering it for you here on KTVU as we have been all morning. Golden Gate Bridge is part of Interstate 880 as well. You're looking at side-by-side -side pictures here. Uh, on the left side of your screen, you see the Golden Gate Bridge. On the right side of your screen, you see what was uh, happening on 880. It's still happening, in fact, right now. Protesters chained to one another as law enforcement and riot gear cleared them from the roadway. It created a complete nightmare for the morning commute. And we have team coverage for you this new time. KTV's Amanda Katana and Tom Baker standing by live along Interstate 80. But first, let's go to KTV's Kristen Caffin. He's at the big problem area at this very moment, which is the Golden Gate Bridge, Christian, and uh, it's still showing no sign of lighting up just yet. Yeah, really, in the last uh, minute since we've started the show, there has been a flurry of activity. We saw a line of CHP vehicles uh, coming down off the bridge heading south into San Francisco. So presumably that means that they're starting to clear that presence. And if we can go ahead and show you what the bridge looks like now, you can see that at this point there is still no vehicle traffic. But again, literally 30 seconds ago or so, we saw a row of about 10 or so CHP vehicles making their way southbound off the bridge. They came off the bridge, turned around in a little parking area uh, just to the east of the bridge and then went underneath. Uh, we might be able to see them perhaps come up on the other side of the toll plaza in that direction. But at this point, still no vehicles coming across. Uh, if we turn, we might be able to see, uh, it looks like some service vehicles starting to make their way uh, southbound on the bridge. It's tough to see, so we're going to have to look uh, in the distance there. Joseph, just a little bit to the left. Uh, if we go to the left there a little bit, we'll be able to see those service vehicles starting to make their way uh, southbound on the bridge, perhaps an indication that they're going to start uh, clearing all of the emergency vehicles that were on the bridge. Again, like I would said, we saw a row of CHP vehicles that all came off at once. Earlier, we saw a bus that came off, uh, presumably again holding some or all of the protesters. Uh, so 
at this point, we are still waiting to figure out exactly when the Golden Gate Bridge is going to reopen. Uh, as you'd said earlier, this protest had been going on uh, since early this morning, since around 7 or 8. We talked to people who told us that they'd been trapped here at the bridge for at least three hours when we spoke with them. I was um, running down the hallway brushing my teeth so I wouldn't be late for work and got the bus on time and now I'm just sitting here for an hour. You know, the protest is just not going to help any child in Gaza, you know, and or any sympathy. You know, and, and it's a complicated situation, I know that, but to, uh, you know, to hold up people who are gen genuinely trying to get to work doesn't help anybody. So again, we did see uh, a bus load. Uh, it was a Golden Gate Transit bus uh, headed southbound. That bus had earlier backed up onto the bridge, uh, presumably with the task of uh, gathering up the protesters and getting them into San Francisco once they were removed by law enforcement. We did see that happen earlier. Uh, so we, uh, if we can come back to our live shot, you might be able to see some of the CHP vehicles now making their way again off the bridge. These are vehicles that are now heading south in the northbound lanes. Uh, so this was a, a, a very, again, large response. A lot of uh, uh, emergency vehicles making their way to that protest, whichever way they could. So that would mean that we're going to see some vehicles, again, uh, headed uh, north in the southbound lanes, south in the northbound lanes. More of those CHP vehicles now making their way uh, off the bridge. Uh, so this is an indication, we don't have a certainty at this point, but this is an indication that some of the law enforcement effort here is being dialed down, presumably because they have uh, those protesters in custody. And if we look on the span, we can see that some of those emergency vehicles now, uh, that fired vehicle backing its way off, you can see those CHP vehicles all making their way uh, southbound off the bridge at this time. So uh, that again, an indication that this is starting to wind down. No indication at this point of exactly when the bridge is going to reopen to traffic in either direction. Uh, we can also see in the distance there uh, a tow truck uh, towing a vehicle off, perhaps a vehicle of uh, some of the protesters who were here, who were unable to remove their vehicle. Uh, so again, you can see that ambulance, that fire vehicle backing their way off, and you can see that tow truck there in the distance. We also did have a chance to talk with uh, some of the protesters here. Now, not all of them were on the bridge. Some of them were on the south side in the pedestrian area of where we were able to meet and discuss what they were doing. They said that they knew full well what they were doing, that this was uh, an intended effect, part of a global effort to disrupt global commerce. They say their message is clear. They want the Biden administration to withdraw aid for Israel, uh, which they say is harming the people of Gaza. We have some sound from one of those uh, protesters uh, coming up. We're here to stop the flow of commerce. Um, we've stopped it for most of this morning and indep independent actions are happening across the nation and we hope that people will start listening when it hits our economy. Again, so they say that this was a directed effort at disrupting the economy. They say that that was one of the reasons why they picked these major arteries, uh, the major freeways in San Francisco. Uh, we've been bringing that coverage all morning long. Uh, and of course, the Golden Gate Bridge stopping uh, traffic and commerce from going uh, north and south through this area. When I asked that protester uh, whether they were concerned about people perhaps uh, getting frustrated, people who perhaps would share uh, their ideology but don't approve of their methodology. They said uh, that uh, they should hope that people would understand that protest is a way of affecting change. They say that there was precedent for this. They say that uh, the precedent goes back to uh, the Vietnam era, the civil rights era. They say that they are uh, conducting the exact same kind of effort here. So again, uh, it appears at this point in time that things are beginning to wind down here at the Golden Gate Bridge. We've seen that outflow of emergency vehicles making their way into San Francisco. We did see that bus earlier, presumably with protesters on board, making its way into San Francisco. At this point, we do not have a timeline of when either the north or southbound lanes of the Golden Gate Bridge will reopen. We will continue to monitor developments out here and bring those to you uh, as they occur. For now, we are live here at the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Christian Captain.
KTVU, Fox 2 News. Christian, thank you. Even before that action on the Golden Gate Bridge started, pro-Palestine protesters blocked 880 northbound in Oakland, about 12 miles or so south of where Christian is. That situation where Amanda Kintan has been reporting live has developed since 6.30 this morning. It's part of an economic blockade expected in cities worldwide. Some protesters are still there, but your situation also has changed, Amanda. Yeah, that's right. So there is one protester left, it looks like, still on the freeway. Um, and we could see that two lanes have now opened up. So you could see uh, police there bringing that tarp out again so that they can continue to cut out that uh, final protester that is sitting there from the big oil bar uh, barrels that uh, they are likely attached to. So we, you know, we've been reporting here all morning. This was the first event that started here at 6:30 this morning. There were six protesters uh, sitting across the freeway, all of them attached to these big oil barrels, uh, which seem to be filled with concrete, something that's causing it to be very difficult for police to get them out of those barrels. Uh, they've been using saws, jackhammers, a lot of different uh, tools to try to get them out of there and remove them from the freeway. So right now we've seen five people be removed so far. There's one that is still there. The five people uh, we've been watching as they kind of have them gathered over there on the freeway there. Uh, there are some that are uh, being detained. You know, they have their hands behind their back with zip ties. Initially, they weren't all being detained because we saw some just standing there, one with their fist up in the air. Uh, so it looks like recently, in just the last few minutes, they have put zip ties on all of them. Uh, this is obviously a planned effort today with the goal of disrupting the global economy. Uh, this is one of many cities across the world where they're expecting these blockades. But here in the Bay Area, this was the first one that we saw. And they did have a huge sign this morning when uh, police were arriving that said A15. That stands for April 15th. Uh, and this is a big day that they were going to have these blockades all over the world to disrupt economic logistical hubs and try to jam up trade choke points. Uh, they say that the global economy is complicit in this ongoing genocide of Palestinian people in Gaza. So here uh, on the side of the freeway, we've been seeing more people show up with flags. Um, you could see one gentleman just got here about 10 minutes ago with an Israeli flag that he's holding up there. And there's a woman with a large Palestinian flag. So they kind of were you know, butting heads a little bit, standing next to each other, trying to put one flag in front of the other. Uh, I talked to one supporter who came. He saw that this was happening on social media, and he hang, came to hang his Palestinian flag and show his support. So let's hear from him. Well, there's a genocide going on halfway across the world, and people have to be informed about it, whether it's going to work, whether it's on social media. People need to stay informed of what's going on. Babies are dying. Now, we have seen many protests like this in the last few months in the Bay Area. Uh, we saw them at the Port of Oakland, the Bay Bridge, FFO, and then we're seeing multiple today. Now, on the A15 website, which is this whole effort that's happening today, they say there's a need to shift now from symbolic actions to those that cause pain to the economy. So that's really what today is about. That is why they're shutting down these areas. They're shutting down 880, the Golden Gate Bridge. That's the whole goal here. Uh, so right Right now, we've been watching this, but only two lanes open still, and they are going to continue to work on that last protester that's sitting there. Uh, but the, the first protester, it took them two hours to cut them out of that barrel, and then it's taken about an hour for each to get them out of there. So this could still be here for a couple more hours. Still, though, two lanes are able to move through right now. Live in Oakland, Amanda Quintana, KTVU, Fox 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you for that update. We'll check in with you shortly here. Meantime, just up the road, a couple miles up the road there, 880 and 7th. Tom Baker is where there was a protest right by one of the main entrances to the Port of Oakland uh, that has really snarled the traffic at the Port of Oakland. Tom, what can you tell us about the protests there? Well, there have been some developments here, and they mostly point towards ending this thing. You'll see uh, one person at, uh, up on the freeway who is walking down. Earlier, five minutes ago, about 20 people 
came down. A few stayed here, but the rest of them, as you can see, these folks on the left, they're getting ready to leave. And about 20 others walked up the uh, uh, road here uh, going towards the post office in West Oakland, BART. Now, having said that about people coming down, I did notice that three other people went back up on the freeway where there were quite a few people, well more than the 20 who came down, that are probably still up there. But again, people have come down and they seem to be loading their stuff up and leaving or walking away. And that is really the situation right here, right now. Earlier, I spoke to a guy named Bill Abudi who uh, told me that he said that there's a lot of support for what's going on at the port here, even though it's inconvenient, but there are many protests and many actions here at the port. And he says that, you know, a lot of the drivers, the truck drivers come from all over the world and they are very sensitive to what's going on in other parts of the world, more so than most Americans are. And as a result, they kind of support what's going on, even though it's costing them money, time and effort and energy and all of that stuff. But again, at this point in time, this appears to be ending but it's not ended completely simply because there are still people up there as i said few just went up there so whatever is going to happen here is going to last for a while we're going to stick around and we'll be back in a little later in the newscast to tell you exactly what's going on back to you all right tom thank you it's been a full eight hours now since ali yeah. rasmus gave her first <laughs> traffic report this morning started off as yep. a normal monday morning ally then things kind of went haywire in that six o'clock hour yep. what are what are the results you still see from your vantage point in the traffic center well, we still see a residual impact from some of the road closures. The total road closure of uh, northbound 880. That was in effect for about five hours. That's where Amanda Quintana was. And as you heard her say, two lanes in that uh, northbound direction are open and there's still a pretty significant backup uh, because of that. It, anytime you shut down a, a major thoroughfare like this and 880 is that uh, roadway that gets a lot of traffic uh, on a normal Monday morning. Anytime you shut it down, even for a short amount of time, let alone several hours, you're going to have a lingering impact. So you can see that uh, from this picture here. Now, where you see these two uh, exclamation marks there, that is where uh, Tom Vakar was. That's where his protest uh, was happening. And that has also led to some traffic uh, problems just north of there in the East Shore Freeway. Now, from there, we'll go over to the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. You see here on the traffic map, it looks like it is still shut down in both directions. But here is a live picture that we are showing you. So now you see the CHP escorting those cars. Some of those drivers have been waiting in that traffic backup on the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge span for uh, almost more than four hours at this point. Now they are finally moving and getting off the Golden Gate Bridge. This is breaking news just happening and just developing. These are the first pictures we're seeing of a CHP escorting some of those trapped drivers who were behind a protest that broke out in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, finally, four hours later, being escorted off the road. This is an aerial view from our news chopper, and you can see uh, there was a huge backup here at the Golden Gate Bridge for many hours. We saw some of the protesters being led away uh, with zip ties behind their backs. According to Christian Captain, who is nearby the scene on Doyle Drive on the south end of the bridge, they were able to take some of those protesters that they detained onto a, a bus on the bridge. But for a couple of hours after that protest had ended, we still saw this backup here. Now you see it is finally starting to clear up. Earlier this morning, when this protest first happened, there you see it. That is the backup that we saw shortly after this protest happened, just before 8 o'clock this morning. And so those drivers are still stuck, you see there. So it, it looks like they're going to escort the people who are on the span of the Golden Gate Bridge off first. And then you see at the bottom of the screen there, two CHP vehicles. I believe in the next uh, half hour or so, maybe even less than that, it looks like they're getting in the car. Uh, Any time now, they're going to start escorting this uh, traffic backup that extends well into Marin County, finally across the Golden Gate Bridge. So this has been a, a big traffic disruption for the morning commute for Bay Area drivers trying to get to where they need to go. You know, the first of these demonstrations happened just before 6 o'clock this morning. That was the one on northbound 880 at Embarcadero. Uh, once that happened, and then we saw about an hour later this uh, sec second protest breakout on the Golden Gate Bridge, we started to get the word out to people that uh, driving today was going to not be your normal commute. There you see live 
CHP escorting the remaining backup, all the drivers who were stuck behind uh, the span of the Golden Gate Bridge, finally being led across uh, after several hours being stuck in place there north of the Golden Gate because of a protest that happened, the pro-Palestine protest that happened in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, so at least we see some movement here and some activity. Uh, with that, let's send it over to uh, Christian Kaftan, who is at Doyle Drive on the south end of the bridge. What are you seeing there? And uh, is there just a rush of cars now getting behind you? I guess we have all our stuff here, though. Yeah, so uh, you might be able to make out uh, exactly what you were talking about. You can see that southbound traffic now making its way toward the toll plaza. All of this happening in the last oh, two minutes or so as people are uh, starting to make their way across the span. We did see all those emergency vehicles coming across. Is this, uh, is it, is this a news crate? Yes, we sure are. It looks like you were trying to get across, uh, trying to, to walk across the bridge. How long were you waiting for? We were waiting for about an hour because of the protests. And uh, did you know that the protest was going on, or were no, you just sort of... Just, we just turned up here, and then they told us we can't walk across because of the protests. And, and that disappointed, or did you know what the protest was about? Um, I've just realized it's about free in Palestine, and I completely agree, but we was really disappointed when we came and realized that we couldn't walk across because they, they said it might take all day to clear it all. So then this has to be a relief to see now that yeah. you can finally get across. Yes. And presumably you're a visitor. Where are you from? Britain. <laughs> no kidding. What part of Britain? Um, like the north of London. Oh, very good. Ladies, enjoy your stay and enjoy the Golden Gate Bridge. It is now reopened. Uh, you can see that we did have uh, those, those uh, uh, visitors who were on foot. We had uh, a lot of people who were looking to go across, uh, uh, cycle across the bridge. And again, now we're seeing that southbound traffic making its way uh, across the bridge. At this point, if we look down there, you can still see that Doyle Drive still uh, is still blocked for northbound traffic. We don't know when they're going to start allowing traffic northbound across the bridge, but you can do you can see that we have uh, plenty of that uh, southbound uh, video pedestrians and cyclists, again, all making their way over and across the bridge at this point. As a matter of fact, we're going to uh, walk up just a little bit farther up so we can actually uh, show you. We're going to wind up on this shot just so that you can kind of see uh, those pedestrians again making their way on the bridge as well as all that southbound traffic, guys. Christian, thank you. We'll check in with you in just a moment because that is the big news, but we still don't see that northbound traffic moving yet. We'll check in with you in just a moment. Tommy Tucson is a law enforcement analyst. He joins us now via Zoom to talk about uh, what we saw unfolding today. Tommy, uh, you've been in law enforcement now for, for, for many years. Uh, <laughs> you've watched this unfold uh, throughout the morning here. Uh, that bridge has been closed since 810 this morning. Uh, what are your thoughts when, you, when you've been watching this? You know, as an American and as an American veteran, I absolutely support the First Amendment, First Amendment right. But it's clear in the First Amendment, court cases have said, First Amendment right is for every one of us unless it breaches the peace. If it breaches the peace and it is a hindrance to the motoring public, which in this case is what it was, then it is no longer just a peaceful protest, but it's an absolute blockage of traffic, barricaded traffic, uh, and just, you know, in law enforcement, we cannot allow that because uh, whereas we support the protest, we don't support, you know, blocking bridges, barricading bridges. That is not what the purpose is. And the traffic is already incredibly congested in the Bay Area. To add this to it, when it could have been prevented, does not show real concern for the uh, community in the Bay Area. You know, with, with all that said, you just mentioned a moment ago, we saw on the Bay Bridge unlike 880, where people had actually, um, you know, fastened themselves to some sort of barrel or something to keep themselves locked into place. We saw on the Golden Gate Bridge people just holding signs. So why do you think it would have taken police, in, in your experience, uh, more, you know, time? Why, why, would, why would they have waited um, uh, so long to start clearing uh, the, the Golden Gate Bridge? <clears throat> I, I would imagine because uh, if it was in the city, that's different. You have municipal policing that can respond readily to this, like in Los Angeles, Sacramento, or in San Francisco proper. But on the bridges, it's the California Highway Patrols, and they have spread the real thin. Mm -hmm. They are spread all across the entire San Francisco Bay Area. So this type of thing, uh, since it's not actually traffic movement, but it is blocking uh, motoring of the public took maybe a little bit longer 
to get situated to take care of this. Yeah, and we're, we're watching in these live pictures now the, the northbound lane just open to traffic just a few seconds ago here as people are watching this live and you could see the the second wave of cars that were waiting on the other side of the bridge that were blocked by CHP making their way finally across the bridge toward the toll plaza as you look live here uh, at the scene here in the Bay Area though protests are treated uh, slightly differently uh, in terms of uh, if you've lived in other parts of the country it really is not like this what can you tell people that live in the Bay Area about what how it's that like here how it's handled here time pass as time passes yeah. it will get better I mean in LA we're used to it and so we respond quickly and rapidly but our conditions are different the bay area is very congested traffic area a lot of people in a real small area so it may take longer to respond i would imagine for future uh the highway patrol now understands this and they'll be ready to react even quicker probably calling mutual aid with san francisco pd and the county sheriff to help this because we can see this is probably going to continue and occur again and preparation and being ready for it will assist law enforcement greatly. All right, Tommy Tucson, legal analyst, uh, law enforcement analyst, uh, joining us this afternoon to give us some insight into what police deal with on their side of things during protests such as this. We appreciate your time, Tommy, take care. Thank you. Straight back to our traffic center here to check in with our Allie Rasmus again for the impact as we're seeing, seeing things sort of unwind here, Allie. We are, at least uh, from the live pictures we can see, Traffic moving again and uh, CHP escorting those drivers that were stuck on the Golden Gate Bridge. Even so, it takes a while after you shut things down, uh, shut down a major thoroughfare like the Golden Gate Bridge or northbound 880. It takes a little while for the backup that remains to kind of clear out, even this late in the day. This is, you know, 12... 20 in the afternoon. This is usually a time of morning or rather day uh, where you don't have, you don't expect any sort of traffic backups, but there is uh, some residual effects from what's happened earlier this morning. As you can see from the traffic maps here in the northbound direction uh, at 880, as you heard Amanda say, they are opening more lanes of traffic there, but you see there's still a lot of uh, heavy traffic around this area. And then take a look at the East Shore Freeway leading to the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. This is all backed up because of uh, the protests that uh, Tom was covering at 7th and 880. Now here is uh, the map of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's still showing that it is completely closed in both directions as we see from our traffic or our live pictures here rather from uh, a helicopter. Traffic is moving here again, but it's going to take a while to clear up all of uh, the traffic backup that's into Marin County because of this being closed for so many hours. Again, it was right before 8 o'clock this morning that the protest happened right in the middle of the span, uh, shutting down both directions of the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, let's go back to here where you can see uh, across the bay in the East Bay, 7th Street and 880. This is uh, where there's another uh, closure off the freeway because of a protest there. That has meant a pretty uh, long commute and some difficult driving on the East Shore Freeway from the Carquinez to the Bridge to MacArthur Mays, 31 minutes. This usually at this time of day should just take you under 20 minutes, but uh, because of a, a couple of uh, protests and closures of certain roads, that's led to backups and bottlenecks elsewhere. This stretch of 880 past the Coliseum is in much better shape. Earlier this morning, these northbound lanes, uh, which were six miles away from the protest at uh, 880 and Embarcadero, way off of... Uh, way beyond where you, we can see from this vantage point. All of this was a parking lot in the northbound direction. Now that situation has resolved. Golden Gate Bridge traffic, this picture looks different as well because now we are seeing uh, some of that backed up northbound, excuse me, southbound traffic that was stuck behind the protest for four and a half hours, now finally moving through. Bay Bridge Toll Plaza looks okay, although they do have the metering lights on, which is unusual for the middle of the day. Uh, all I can guess or surmise is that with so much, uh, so many road closures and protests and blocking of these major roads, uh, there's just uh, some residual traffic impacts throughout the region uh, that have led to kind of some irregular patterns, including here at the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. But uh, things are improving. It is taking a little while, uh, but for the most part, at least traffic in most of these spots is moving again, which is different from what we saw 
just a few hours ago. Andre. Ali, thank you. All right, we're going to get back over to Tom Baker now. He's over by one of the main entrances to the port off of 880 and 7th in uh, Oakland right now. Uh, Tom, you have an update for us. What can you tell us about the scene there? Well, since last we saw you, a couple of cars have actually pulled up to this line and they've wanted to try to get on the freeway, which is closed. But there's no police here to do this. So one was a, a silver Cadillac and the other one was a silver Porsche. And in both cases, they sat there for a couple of minutes. The Porsche sat for about five trying to convince these people to let them through. Now, they're not going to do that because their colleagues are up there on the freeway. And uh, this is where a police officer, had there been one here, would have just told him to move on. But, it, you know, it was one of those things where it could get out of hand very easily if tempers get going and all that stuff. But I must say that, once again, these protesters were very respectful. They stood their ground, but they did not uh, try to be provocative in any way, shape, or form. And as a result, uh, that ended peacefully. Now, I can tell you that more people are coming down off the freeway but I can also tell you that since we last were here, about 25 people have come off the freeway and they've left. They have either walked up uh, towards the post office or they've gotten into uh, cars and they have simply left. So the number seems to be dwindling up there, although there's still a line here. And as you can see off here to the left, some of these people are leaving. But as long as there are people up here, this line is going to remain so that those people can get down off of this freeway safely. This is the kind of thing that, as I say, this is where tempers can flare, but it looks as though this thing may be coming to an end. You never really know, but in a situation like this where a lot of people are leaving, uh, you know, uh, company, there's safety in numbers, and there just aren't the numbers here that there were before. So we'll keep sticking around a little bit, but uh, if anything else develops, we'll get back to you. But that's the situation right here at the southern entrance to 880 right here on 7th Street in Oakland, right right next to the port. Back to you. All right, Tom Baker, thank you. We'll come back to you later in the hour. We're taking a very short break yep. now. When we come back, more on the developing news now. Major protests took over the large part of the morning commute. Things are changing dramatically. More after this.
Back to that breaking news we've been covering for hours now. Protesters took over the Golden Gate Bridge and parts of Interstate 880 in Oakland. That 80 action started in the 6 o'clock hour this morning. We saw protesters chain themselves to each other before ultimately law enforcement and riot gear cleared them from the roadway. Boy, the morning commute was a mess. KTV's Christian Captain's been at the Golden Gate Bridge showing us a changing situation there. Christian? Yeah, it, what a difference a half hour makes, right? We are now looking at a completely reopened uh, Golden Gate Bridge. Traffic now moving at a, what looks like a regular pace in both the north and southbound lanes. Uh, all of that has now been reopened really in just the last 15 minutes or so uh, is when we saw the big change. Uh, we did see... Uh, uh, some of the uh, arrests happening before the noon hour. Uh, and we did see uh, some of the uh, uh, vehicles leaving, some of the protesters leaving the bridge, presumably again on a big bus. But as you can see now, traffic uh, now moving smoothly in both directions. Tourists also uh, using the pedestrian and bike path uh, to make their way onto the bridge. We talked earlier uh, with a visitor who told us she'd been waiting for an hour to try to walk across the bridge and didn't know if she'd be able to do it. Uh, now saying that she can do it. A Coast Guard helicopter flying overhead right now, uh, low, uh, relatively low in terms of where it is. Of course, we do have a Coast Guard station uh, right here close to uh, the northern end of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, but again, it appears now that traffic has started to resume its normal pattern. Uh, we don't know how much of a backup we have in San Francisco or in Marin County, uh, but now traffic starting to move freely uh, in both directions across the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, all of this part of a uh, global protest uh, against U.S. support for Israel. Uh, we did have a chance to speak with one of the protesters who was not on the bridge but stayed on the southern side of the bridge to act as a spokesperson who explained that they chose uh, large avenues, large bridges, large roads, specifically in an effort to try to block commerce. We're here to stop the flow of commerce. Um, we've stopped it for most of this morning, and indep independent actions are happening across the nation, and we hope that people will start listening when it hits our economy. And again, the effort there really to block commerce, to raise awareness of their issue when I had a chance to talk with them about uh, whether they were worried that their actions could uh, turn off people who would otherwise be supportive of their, uh, their thought and their um, ideology. Uh, through their methodology, they said that uh, they were not worried about that. They said there's a long precedence for uh, protest, and they say that uh, that protest now, they're using their voices uh, to uh, try to uh, tell the Biden administration to cut off aid to Israel. Uh, and again, we are uh, seeing that Coast Guard helicopter make low passes uh, over the Golden Gate Bridge. Unclear if this is related in some way to the protests. Uh, it does appear to be a relatively unusual pattern for a Coast Guard helicopter to take, although there are Coast Guard uh, stations in the area. Seeing them make those low passes over and around the bridge is uh, relatively uncommon. Again, at this point, not clear if it is definitively somehow tied to the protest that we saw out here uh, that has now come to an end at the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, but we will continue to monitor developments here again. Traffic now moving uh, smoothly in both directions. At this point, we don't know what the traffic backup looks like either in San Francisco or Marin County, but traffic now making its way north and south across the span here at the Golden Gate Bridge. We are live at the Golden Gate Bridge. Christian Captain, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And Christian, just a heads up, CHP just sends a message out just a moment ago. It says any media that wants information on what happened here to meet them at the flagpole at the visitor center. So that's where CHP is going to be set up right now. That message just coming out. Just wanted to pass it along to you since you were on the air when that message Message came out. The flagpole at the visitor center is where CHP will be to give more information about uh, what transpired. Well, on the and bridge if you want to today. take a look, that is yeah. exactly where we are. We yeah. are right here yeah. uh, at that flagpole. Yeah. So we will stand by here yeah. uh, at the flagpole at the southern mm -hmm. end of the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, hopefully awaiting for that CHP uh, update. Thank you very much for letting yeah. us know. And we will make sure that we stay here and we'll bring you those new developments as they occur out here, guys. All right, uh, Christian, thank you. Uh, so back to 880 now, because that's what the one that's been going on the longest here since uh, just after six o'clock this morning. Uh, the pro-Palestinian pr protesters blocking Interstate 880 right by Embarcadero. If you're heading northbound, uh, 
this has been going on for, for, for a long time. Amanda Catana is there. And Amanda, while some lanes are open, there's still, at last check, at least one protester is still trying to free um, on, the, on the northbound lane there. Yeah, there's still one protester, and you're right, still just two lanes open. Uh, so we've been watching. It looks like they might be nearing the end of uh, freeing this final protester from those big barrels. Uh, if, if you're just joining us, the, there were six protesters that were sitting in a line across the freeway, uh, each of them attached to at least one. Some of them had two big oil barrels that they were attached to uh, on their on their hands. So some of them had one barrel on the right hand, one barrel on the left hand. It seems like these barrels have been filled with concrete, um, uh, something that's been really difficult for law enforcement to get through. We've been watching. This has been taking a very long time. As you mentioned, this started at 6.30. So we've been watching, you know, they have to go through each layer to free these protesters. So, you know, they started with a saw. They come in with a jackhammer. We're seeing sparks flying. It's, it, it's a whole ordeal to get these people released from those barrels. So we have seen five people that have been removed. Uh, they're in zip ties. Uh, still on the freeway last week saw them, but it's kind of difficult to see around all these vehicles that are here for this, responding to this incident. Uh, so this final person looks like they are going to be uh, released here soon, get, get, getting free from that barrel. Uh, right now there are two lanes that are open. Now this was the first uh, place that we saw these protests this morning around 6 30. Uh, when we got here there was a big sign there were a bunch of Palestinian flags the sign said a15 uh, so that's a coordinated effort that's happening today happening today all over the world and it's meant to jam up trade choke points and disrupt economic logistical hubs because they say that this effort uh, is because the global economy is complicit in the ongoing genocide of Palestinian people in Gaza so the whole point is to stop the global economy, disrupt it. Um, now, I spoke to a supporter who uh, saw this protest on social media and decided to come and hang their Palestinian flag here and show their support. But it looks like, let's hold on before we go to that sound. There is this final uh, protester that you could see uh, walking off now. Uh, and it looks like they're going to bring them over. Uh, to another part of the freeway that where they've been uh, holding the other five people. Uh, but it seems like that is the last person. So they might be cleaning up here soon uh, and, and opening more lanes. But let's hear from that supporter that I talked to earlier today. Well, there's a genocide going on halfway across the world. And people have to be informed about it, whether it's going to work, whether it's on social media. People need to stay informed of what's going on. Babies are dying. We've obviously seen many protests like this here in the last few months in the Bay Area, Port of Oakland, Bay Bridge, SFO. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they're kind of changing their tune because on the website for this event today, this A15 event for April 15th, they've been saying there's a need to shift now from symbolic actions to those can, that can cause pain to the economy. So that's really uh, what the change is now. That's what they're going to focus on, and that's what today is all about. Uh, Oakland, obviously, just one of uh, more than 50 cities that there are with these planned protests. Uh, but if you take a look at the police here, it looks like they're going to start cleaning up. Uh, we've been watching after one protester is removed from the freeway, we see Caltrans come out uh, with, and they sweep up which must be like the, the concrete from inside those barrels. So after each protester is removed, they come sweep it up and then they open one more lane if they can. So uh, it looks like more lanes might be open soon, but we'll keep you updated. Obviously a very, very long morning for anyone that has been on 880 that started at 630 in the morning. It took more than two hours for police to get through those first barrels to get that first protester out of this, uh, out of the way. So this has just been a very long process. And then they had to continue, go to the, on to the next protester, then bring out the jackhammer, then bring out the saw. It's been a very, very long morning. 
out here on 880. Live in Oakland, Amanda Quintana, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Amanda, thank you. CHP sending on an update on some of the uh, demonstrations that were taking part. Another area uh, was uh, east and westbound I-80 connector ramps to southbound I-80, I-880 rather in Oakland. Uh, that was also affected. Uh, now let's go to Tom Baker. He's over at 7th and I-880 uh, right by the uh, one of the main entrances to the Port of Oakland with much more on the demonstrations taking place there. Tom? Well, first thing we do, take a look at the line here. What you will see is there are a lot of people, more than there have been for quite some while, and that is a lot of those people have come off the freeway. And if you look way up the ramp there, you can see another couple of people coming. This very much looks like it's going to be over. The other thing that we saw up here is we saw the very slow movement of trucks across this bridge, which is, in fact, Interstate 880 South, the Nimitz. Uh, there have been trucks and cars going there. There's not one right now, but uh, I see one now just at the very beginning of the bridge. You can see it's a very slow roll, and because it is a very slow roll, uh, this is, doesn't mean that this freeway is open or anything, but they are starting a movement, and this is probably maybe the 10th or 12th truck that has passed through here. In the meantime, I think one of the things that they're trying to do is to make sure that everybody is off the freeway before they do that. And then what happens is the police will come at some point in time and require these folks to leave. And behind there, what is really interesting is they laid out some blockades, some boxes and some tires and things like that. Before anybody can enter this freeway, those are going to have to be cleaned up. I must tell you that the uh, protesters did have uh, earlier in the day several garbage bags, whichever cre whatever trash they created, they've actually bagged up and are going to take with them. But as you see people coming off, you might see a few of these uh, barriers that are in the road. They're not very big, but you wouldn't want to drive your car over them. And now, if you look back up at the bridge, you can actually see the tops of these trucks that are moving southward very, very slowly. I'm sure it's very much controlled, but they are actually uh, doing what they need to do. So. It's pretty likely that this is over at this point in time as people continue to walk down the uh, on-ramp. But the uh, fact is uh, that is the situation here at uh, 7th Street and the 880 South entrance. Back to you. Tom Baker, thank you. We'll update that story throughout the day. Meanwhile, we're tracking another developing story. The news that the women's federal prison in Dublin is shutting down after a sex abuse scandal involving numerous prison guards and inmates. KTV crime reporter Henry Lee live outside the prison in Dublin to bring us the latest, Henry. Well, Gossia, this came as a surprise to many inmates who are now being transferred to other prisons across the country. Now, this comes weeks after a judge appointed a special master to oversee reforms here at this prison because of a sex abuse scandal. We don't know if this closure is temporary or permanent. We'll show you some video from earlier. Now, we did see some buses arriving at the prison this morning. We do understand some of them are moving some of the 600 inmates at this all-female prison in Dublin. KTVU has learned some have already been transferred and the rest are expected to be gone by Friday. Now, federal prison officials won't say exactly when or where these inmates will end up for their own safety. This sudden closure comes just weeks after a federal judge named a special master to oversee reforms at the, at the prison. Now, the move comes after eight correctional officers, including the former warden, were charged in federal court with having sex with female inmates, including the former warden who was one of the suspects. Now, seven have been convicted. And just last month, FBI agents raided the prison on the same day that officials announced the new warden, an associate warden, and a captain were all dismissed. That new leadership uh, was in place, but they are now gone. Now, the Bureau of Prison says it is working on deactivation and says this closure may be temporary. It will result in a, quote, mission change. But it's not clear what that means and that how it may affect any reforms. We did speak to an aunt of an inmate who was upset by the closure, as well as an attorney who said the announcement took everyone by surprise. She's petrified because she doesn't know where she's going. She's sick and she is supposed to be released immediately. So she's not sure, as far as she's concerned, she's not sure what's gonna happen. So whether it's a good thing or a bad thing for the prison in general, I, I can't say. I mean, it's, it's a shock. Uh... You know, we were not provided any kind of advance notice, um, which tells a lot about the approach the government has taken in um, keeping the welfare of uh, the women and, and others who live at 
Dublin in mind? We're hearing varying opinions as to whether this closure is a good thing. Now, the attorney we spoke to says it is because of all the issues this prison has experienced. But clearly, the women who have been housed here are being uprooted and are worried about their future. Now, as far as the employees at this prison, we're being told they are not being affected. We did learn that the federal judge overseeing reforms did hold an emergency meeting and told all the stakeholders that the special master will be in place, will be there to look over this transfer, and will make sure none of the women who are being moved will be retaliated against. Live in Dublin, Henry Lee, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Big development coming out this morning, Henry. Thank you. Meantime, Donald Trump is in a New York courtroom today for the first ever criminal trial of a former president. The trial is beginning with jury selection, which could take up to two weeks because of the large pool of prospective jurors. So far, about 50 of the 500 potential jurors have been excused. Trump is charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records. The charges stem from a $130,000 payment Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. They were allegedly made to keep her from going public during the 2016 election about an affair she had with Trump. She has denied the affair and pleaded not guilty to the charges which he says are politically motivated. All right, turning, switching gears now to your forecast, KTV meteorologist Rosemary Rosco is here now uh, with what it's going to be looking like, uh, hopefully much different than the weekend was, Rosemary. Yes, after a chilly start to the day, temperatures are warmer this uh, afternoon. Uh, Andre Ingasia with partly cloudy skies expected for the second half of the day. Let's take a live look over San Francisco, where we do have partly sunny conditions at this time, start out with a little bit of fog. But at this time, we are much warmer in most areas by 9 degrees in Nevada for the Inner East Bay, up by 7 in Concord, along the peninsula by 4 San Carlos. Temperatures ranging from mid-50s at the coastline to uh, six upper 60s for our inland cities. And the winds are generally light. We'll see an uptick in the wind uh, into the afternoon, but it shouldn't be too bad. Meanwhile, a view here of Storm Tracker 2, where, again, we are partly cloudy for the afternoon today. Day. Ridge is building in, and with that, we are not only going to remain dry, but we are going to warm things up. Here's a look at the future cast model, putting it into place for you. Notice the ridge that begins to build in right in here. By Thursday, it breaks down a little bit. So right now, Wednesday, perhaps into Thursday, could be the warmest days before temperatures uh, come down, but still very, very nice. I'll show you that in the extended forecast for today. A, um, a, a pretty good jump in the numbers. Pleasant Hill expected to go to 67, 65 for San Mateo, and a better look at some of these numbers for the afternoon. Upper 60s for Napa, upper 60s expected in Concord, as well as San Jose. Uh, if you're going to the A's game a little bit later today, game time 640, partly cloudy skies, 60 degrees with a west breeze to 10 miles per hour, so not too bad, but likely to need the layers or a jacket. Your extended forecast here. Notice the nice warm-up coming our way starting tomorrow a notable jump in those temperatures. And then as we get into Wednesday right now, uh, looks to be the warmest day. The ridge begins to break down on Thursday. But Friday and into your weekend, dry conditions expected. 60s at the coast and mid to upper 60s for our Bayside communities, mid to upper 70s for our inland cities. Back to you. Thank you, Rosemary. A major impact in several parts of the Bay. Protesters blocked the Golden Gate Bridge, parts of Interstate 880 in Oakland. We have continuing team coverage for you next.
All right, so we're going on, what, six, seven hours now uh, along 880 northbound at Embarcadero, uh, where protesters had blocked themselves off, traffic brought to a standstill. Some lanes are now open, but at least one protester was still out there when last we checked in with you, Amanda. What's the update? Yeah, so they took that protester away, and we've been watching, trying to see kind of where they're taking them. It looks like uh, they were loading them into this big blue van uh, that appears to have a, a sheriff's department uh, logo on it. So it looks like all of the protesters uh, have been removed from the barrels that they were attached to. Um, again, these big oil barrels, like 50-gallon barrels, uh, that must have been filled with some kind of cement or something that made them really difficult for officers to get through. Uh, so all of them have been removed after, you know, using a saw, a jackhammer, so many different things that police had to use to get these people free from those barrels. Now they're being loaded into that van. There are still only two lanes open right now, but it seems like that might change very quickly. Uh, we did see Caltrans out there, you know, sweeping up, uh, trying to clean up the area where uh, police were working. Um, because there was likely concrete, uh, a bunch of stuff there after having to use all those tools to get those protesters free. Um, so still only two lanes right now, uh, but it seems like that is going to change very quickly here. But this has been a very long morning here on 880 because this protest started at 6.30 this morning. This was the first protest that we saw here in the Bay Area as part of this effort that's a worldwide effort today. Uh, it's called the A15 uh, effort that they've been talking about. It's for April 15th. They wanted all these different organizations to come out and protest today. They wanted them to disrupt the global economy as a way uh, to show that they want to see a free Palestine. And this is all a coordinated effort. Uh, we actually initially got some information that they would be at the West Oakland BART station, um, but then they ended up here um, on 880 and traffic was at a standstill for hours, hours and hours that those drivers were sitting there uh, kind of watching and waiting. That first protester that they had removed here, it took them two hours to get through with the jackhammer, with the saw, with all of that to get that protester out. And then it has just taken hours and hours to get all the other people out. So six in total, but they are all gone. And again, just two lanes open right now. Uh, but it looks like that's going to change very quickly as the freeway is being cleaned up. Live in Oakland, Amanda Quintana, KTVU, Fox 2 News. All right, let's head just north of where you are, Amanda, to check in one more time with our Tom Bakar. It's been sort of a, an on and off situation there where you are. Well, it's very definitely on. Uh, if you take a look, you will see that the protesters are still here blocking, blocking the entrance. But if you look up the very end, you will see a whole bunch of people. I don't believe those are police officers. They don't look like police officers, but a bunch of people all the way up there that are still essentially on the freeway, even though it is an on-ramp. So while it is true that traffic is moving uh, on the uh, 880, it is also true that there's still people up there, so this is far from really over over. Now, what this is all about is, of course, support for Palestine. And earlier I spoke to a Palestinian ethnic uh, who happens to have been in the United States Army and who is a, uh, uh, owns a trucking company called AB Trucking. His name is Bill Abudi, and this is what Bill had to say both about the port and Palestine. All right, all right, so there you see people coming down uh, the uh, walkway, if you want to call it a walkway, it's an on-ramp, obviously, but they're coming down, and uh, if that means that uh, they're being uh, forced to come down, then it also means that they will remove these people, and then it also means that then they will clear off anything to make sure that uh, the cars don't hit any barriers. There are none seem to be up there anymore. And uh, that is the situation here. I think we're coming to the end of it, but uh, it's been a long morning, and uh, we don't really know if it's over, if it's not. 
We'll see you later. Reporting live, Tom Baker, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Well, Tom, from the pictures here that we're seeing, uh, this is still going to be going on for a little while here. Uh, we saw the picture of Tom down. We didn't realize how heavy duty it was on top of 880 right now where we see uh, some CHP officers. Mm -hmm. and it looks like more uh, demonstrators now than there is CHP officers at the scene, but uh, they haven't chained themselves to anything, at mm -hmm. least as far as we can tell, like they did on 880. Um, and, and then we learned on the Golden Gate Bridge, which opened uh, just about right. half hour ago to, to traffic that indeed some cars were actually had to be right. towed. So some of the protesters did something similar to what we saw back in November by leaving their car on the bridge. Are we sure that this is right above where Tom is? Because I'll be honest. OK, it is. OK, yeah. great. I was thinking there's a little bit too much. There's more greenery than I remember there being. But yes, yeah, so this yeah. is essentially right mm -hmm. above. You know, we saw the overpasses yeah. where Tom is on the ground. The, so two angles essentially of the same picture here. Uh, this is the largest crowd we've seen gathered yeah. here. We yeah. sent Sky Fox over. Sky Fox was over uh, the 880 uh, Oakland situation several miles south of here, but we are going to stay on top of this. Of course, we will have new information for you online immediately as it happens. Uh, this is part of a uh, nationwide day of action, if you will. The morning commute was completely disrupted mm -hmm. by protesters in Oakland and also on the Golden Gate Bridge. And now there is, appears to be a larger sort of action. We see, uh, of course, flags waving. We see uh, police officers. We see protesters. No clashes, if you will, but this is sort of the most face-to-face -face action, mm -hmm. if you will, that we have seen all morning. Yeah, we've seen uh, the folks from this is about a few miles uh, north of where the protesters had chained themselves to that uh, to perhaps a barrel with concrete in it. Uh, and this is the largest gathering we've seen so far. They're making their way down the highway. Uh, nonetheless, we're not sure where they're heading and if they're going to be affected by that overpass that uh, flies over uh, onto 80 northbound. We'll keep following the story. We'll have much more for you online at KTV.com and on later newscast starting at 4 o'clock. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining.